Summer has come early to Houston in more ways than one, as the Astros have turned up the heat and the winds are coming in waves. Winning baseball is contagious. And last night, Astros bats finally caught the fever. The fun and excitement is back at Minute Maid and throughout the organization. What will happen tonight? Minute Maid Park in Houston, Texas. Comcast Sportsnet brings you Houston Astros baseball. Tonight, it's game two of this three-game series between the Astros and the Milwaukee Brewers. Good evening, everybody. Bill Brown and Alan Ashby having witnessed an Astros blowout last night after they won three of four from the White Sox, and this is looking like a very good homestand, Ash. Ball club's playing well. They're getting that steady, good starting pitching, occasionally getting some offense. Last night didn't feel like a laugher for a good part of the ball game, but once it turns into that type of game, it sure is nice for the home squad. It started with a little old sacrifice fly for the first run of the night. As the Astros pick up one, then they jump ahead two to one. So that squeeze bought that safety squeeze laid down by Marwin Gonzalez. Maxwell scoring, and then Carlos Pena got the act. A big three run homer and the Astros took a nice rather comfy lead at that point but then Matt Dominguez turned it into the lap for grand slam first on the year for Houston first of the career for Matt Dominguez and you've got a 10 1 win and when you're able to put up 10 runs on the board the way the Astros have been pitching you got a pretty good chance of winning. They can put up 10 runs on Kyle Loesch. We have quite a story because he has done a number on them the last few years. Kyle Loesch over the last couple of years has been very good against Houston over his career 10 and 8. But you go back over the last couple of years with his changeup and the type of stuff he has 4 and 1 in that span 158 the ERA. He's been absolutely dynamite and this veteran can be a very tough one on the other side. Eric Bedard is coming on the heels of a quality start last time out much better than quality in fact. As he works six shutout in one run innings, I should say. And Eric Bedard has been really a quality starter for this ball club now for some time. One start, just a couple of starts back, he had a little bit of a rough patch. But that's been it. Eric Bedard has been a winner. Coming up, Julia Morales has a special feature with the man who returned to the lineup for the Astros last night. Max Stout, we hope there's plenty of life left in Justin Maxwell. We'll hear from Jay Max in just a moment.
Astros baseball on Comcast Sportsnet. The Astros taking on the Milwaukee Brewers. Game two of a three-game series, and we welcome you inside the dugout where I'm joined with Justin Maxwell before the game. Welcome back, by the way. This is a face we haven't seen in a while, getting back yesterday. How do you feel being back? Oh, it's great. You know, uh, had a good rehab stand. Got to go to Corpus Christi in uh, Oklahoma City, and, you know, I'm really excited to play under a roof. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. Well, we do welcome you back, and first 20 games you were here, team was struggling a little bit. I think it was 5 for 15. Now that you're back, the team is on a different level, playing really well as of late. Have you noticed any difference? I know you've only been here a day, but have you noticed any difference with this team? Uh, well, I know we have a much more positive attitude than uh, when I left, and uh, I think our pitching has done a really good job in my absence, and we've had a lot of time hitting. And uh, We always say pitching and defense win, so we're doing all, all those good things right now. So it's a good time to join the club, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, for you, you started off the year so well, struggled a little bit right before getting hurt. So, as, you know, in addition to just trying to get your timing back and everything like that, is there anything you're working on right now? No, oh, I mean, that's the main thing. All you can do as a hitter is just try to have a good quality at bat and try to hit the ball as hard as you can. So, you know, even before I got hurt, I was hitting the ball hard just right to people. So just try to keep it positive and just get them tonight. Which teammate did you miss the most? Uh, probably my locker mate, Barnes. Uh, we, you know, we talk a lot. And, you know, and J.D. in the outfield, uh, during our early work, we always like to mess around and stuff and have a good time. So I would say those two guys. Thank you so much for joining us, and uh, good luck tonight. Yeah, no problem. Thanks. All right, stay with us. Coming up, the Astros take on the Brewers, trying to put up another big offensive night. Stay with us. First pitch in lineup around the break. Astros baseball on Comcast Sportsnet is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. This homestand has been something for Astros fans and something they have not seen this year with uh, the success that this ball club has had so far with a four and one record on this homestand. That's more games than they've won on any homestand so far this year and uh, they have now clinched their first winning homestand of the year. And they hope it continues as it's game two of this series, the Astros and Brewers meeting. And here's a look at Ron Renneke's starters. Ricky Weeks is the second baseman. He's followed by Gene Segura at shortstop. Carlos Gomez is the center fielder. He made an absolutely stupendous catch last night up on Towels Hill. Ramos Ramirez plays third base, batting fourth. It's Jonathan Lucroy, the designated hitter. Inieski, Betancourt at first base. Martin Maldonado, the catcher. Josh Prince, a rookie in left field. And Logan Schaefer in right field. For the Astros left-hander, Eric Bedard goes to the hill, 34 years of age. He's 2-3 and three on the year, 
482 the ERA. He had put together five consecutive very good starts up until a start in Anaheim, then struggled at Kansas City before last time out, throwing six innings of one run ball. That was an unearned run. Eric Bedard has been a very solid and consistent pitcher for the Astros. That defense behind Eric Bedard tonight, behind the dish. It's Jason Castro once again around the infield right to left. Carlos Pena, Jose Altuve, Ronnie Cedeno, and Matt Dominguez, the big hero last night with his first grand slam in the outfield. Brandon Barnes in center and flanked by Justin Maxwell in right. J.D. Martinez in left field. Leadoff man Ricky Week steps up against Eric Bedard. Bedard 0-2 lifetime against the Brewers with an ERA above 11. And there's strike one to Weeks with Bruce Streckman, the home plate umpire, ringing it up. Weeks had 212 with five homers, has driven in 13 and a slow start, a 310 on base average for Ricky, the Brewers' first round pick in 03. He was the second player drafted that year. He's now 30 years old. Scooter Jeanette has been cutting into his playing time at second base recently. That's popped up, and Matt Dominguez gets underneath it at third base. And it goes as out number one for Bedard. That was a time killing pop up right there. It sure was. Up near the roof. We could have told a short story during that. I think you've got some you could have fit in there. Some of them aren't so short, though. <laughs> Gene Segura comes up next. He's been a revelation at 330 with 10 homers. He's driven in 30 with a 366 on base average, fourth best batting average in the National League, and good defensive work as well. He had a hit and he was hit by a pitch last night. Strike one for Bedard. He's shooting for career win number 66. He is 65 and 67 with a 3.90 career ERA. Coming off a win against the White Sox with a fine effort, striking out six in six innings, holding the Sox to just one run on three hits. And that was a bounce back game for him, Ash, because he had struggled in his previous start at Kansas City, allowing six earned runs in four and two thirds innings. That one at Kansas City again. Came on the heels of five consecutive very good starts for Eric. He's kind of a reborn pitcher in this rotation. The curve is tapped foul by Segura. Segura had a one and two count. Well, Bedard is part of quite a changing picture for the Astros in terms of performance by the starting rotation. Since May 15th, the starters in 31 games have combined for an ERA of 2.97. Doug Brocale and Bo Porter. Like what they're seeing on the mound. Lucas Harrell, a big part of that. Dallas Keuchel. Maybe Nate Lucero is a part of it, too. <laughs> That's a strikeout looking, and Segura is out number two. I saw Nate Lucero, the trainer, getting in a little tossing yeah. the other day, and so maybe he's getting ready to fill in. <laughs> maybe so. A lot of credit to go around, isn't there? Boy, that. Group of starters just seems to have grown together. Yes. It seems to be feeding off each other right now. Now, Carlos Gomez has been dynamic this year to the tune of 320, 12 homers, 37 driven in, a gaudy 948 OPS for Carlos Gomez. And a spectacular catch up on Tows Hill last night. There's strike one to Gomez. Gomez at the plate last night had two hits and four at bats. He is quite the gazelle in center field, no doubt. Oh, yeah, he goes hard. Very speedy player. Off the plate for Bedard. That brings the count to one and one for Gomez. Gomez, along with his teammate Gene Segura, two of the seven players in the majors with 10 homers and 10 steals or more this year. Didn't quite have the bite to it that Bedard probably was looking for, and it's a two ball, one strike count. Fastball has been a key for Eric when he's pitched well. That pitch has been reliable for him this year. That's in a pretty good spot, but he didn't get a call, and it's three and one. It's a great location. You hope to get the call in that location. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't, but. Early in the ball game tends to be a tighter strike zone than you see a little bit later. I 
that's in for a strike and it's 3 2 now to Gomez. I'm going to guess Carlos Gomez might be kicking himself for taking that pitch. Bedard might have been forced into finding the heart of the plate. Brewers are in the middle of the pack and run scored in the National League. They are missing Ryan Braun, Corey Hart, and others right now. That's out of play. Braun has had thumb issues and he's on the disabled list. Hart has not played a game all year for Ron Renneke. And there are others too who are disabled. And Nori Aoki has left the club now on paternity leave, his wife due to deliver a baby. Third major league season for Ron Renneke, 207, 186 so far for Ron. That's in the air and it goes to right field. Justin Maxwell backing on it. For a 1 2 3 first for Eric Bedard. Kyle Loesch takes the mound in just a moment. Against right hander Kyle Lowe's with Brandon Barnes leading it off at center field. Jose Altuve at second base. Jason Castro, the catcher, batting third. JD Martinez in left field. Chris Carter, the DH. Carlos Pena at first base. Justin Maxwell, right field. Matt Dominguez, third base. Ronnie Cedeno, shortstop. On the mound for the Brewers, right hander, the veteran Kyle Loesch. Two and six on the year, 384 the ERA. Pitched well against the Astros, 10 and 8 lifetime. Allowed 13 dingers this year in just under 80 in innings of work. Left hand hitters have had a struggle. Defensively for the Brewers. Behind the plate tonight, Martin Maldonado. He typically does the work for Loesch. Around the infield, right to left, Unieski, Betancourt, Ricky Weeks, Gene Segura, and Aramis Ramirez in the outfield for these Brewers. Get to those guys in just a moment. One of them might get a chance. Gomez in center. And that takes care of the center fielder. And now number one on Barnes. Here goes Brownie jumping right in on it. <laughs> Carlos Gomez in center. He'll be flanked in right by Logan Schaefer in left field. Josh Prince. Prince just recalled uh, to cover the absence of Ioki on the paternity leave. And now Altuve. And there's Josh Prince. They converted shortstop playing left field. Altuve at 288 with three homers has 27 runs batted in. Loesch has really done a number on the Astros. 10 and 8 lifetime, but a 2.74 ERA lifetime. That's strike one. And all those years, he was pitching for the St. Louis Cardinals, but started his career in the White Sox organization. They traded him to the Twins. And then he was a Cincinnati Red after an 06 trade. Moved along to the Phillies, but Really settled in with the Cardinals as a free agent in 08 and had big years for the Redbirds. What a year he had last year 16 and 3. That coming on the heels of a 14 and 8 campaign in St. Louis. That is a big year. Altuve takes it. Two balls and a strike. So he went kind of neglected on the free agent market this spring. 
finally signing on March 25th, a three year, $33 million deal with the Brewers. And many felt that was far below the value he should have commanded. Ground ball in the hole, and Segura backhands, ties it from deep and short and way up the line. And a good play by Bettencourt to get over. Otherwise, Segura throws it away, but it's an infield hit for Altuve. I think that age of 34 years probably didn't play in the corner of Kyle Loesch. Get teams that are being presented a, a chance to sign a guy for three, four, five years at that age. Tough to be able to stomach that. Nice start here for Jose. Ball sharply hit, and that's a heck of a play at shortstop. The throw lacked a little direction. It certainly did. Yeah, he fired up a prayer over there toward first. Now Jason Castro on a five game hitting streak 273 for Jason 10 homers 25 driven in a good 817 OPS more and more all star talk surrounding Jason Castro's year now. And throw goes over to first on Altuve who has been successful 13 times in 17 tries. Maldonado has thrown out one of 11. Good numbers for Jose 76 percent of the time he's made it. Astros are eighth in the American League in steals with 40. They've been caught a league high 23 times. Jason takes a look at it and it's ball one to Castro. The first time Loesch started against the Astros was in Cincinnati in 06. Eight innings of shutout ball. He faced the Roy Oswalt several times in his career. So he's somebody the Astros have seen quite often down through the years. He faced them three times last year, twice in 2011. Strike makes him one and one. Castro 0 for 3 lifetime against Loesch. Well, he just seemed to be such a good fit for that Cardinal club. As you mentioned, 16 and 3 last year, the way they support their pitchers with runs and also with their catcher Yadier Molina being such a powerful force. That was a nice fit for Loesch. Nice fit for the Cardinals as well. That it was. Two and one. He is not the dominant sword but really keeps the walks under control. Not a big high strikeout guy. The changeup has been a very effective pitch for Kyle Loesch. Brewers did have to surrender a first round draft pick when they signed him as a free agent. And that was one deterrent to other clubs signing him this winter. Castro takes a look at it. It's three and one. That, that probably tells you what the Brewers thought of their chances this year. Maybe if we can acquire a guy of this stature we've got a chance of winning. It just has not panned out that way. Yeah, Ron Renneke's club after having a decent season last year of 83 and 79 sustaining a lot of injury losses and just not pitching well until about the last week runner going and that's ball four. Castro takes a walk in his first and second with one out for J.D. Martinez. They have really struggled on the mound. Lately they were spurring things away for eight starts before last night, but then last night Alfredo Figueroa was tagged for four earned runs in four and a third innings. Very competitive ERA in 2011, higher last year by quite a bit, and then 4.39. Foul back. JD with six homers has driven in 24 with a 257 batting average. Last night he had a hit. Loesch is from Chico, California. That's a fake toward second base. And Pitch was a ball, and it's a one ball, one strike count. I don't know. Don't know if that fake from behind the plate cost the home plate umpire, but that pretty good looking pitch there. Bruce Dreckman has allowed a couple of very good looking close pitches to be balls. It might have cost him a call when the catcher came up. Altuve takes off for third, and he will make it without a throw. A stolen base, number 14 for Altuve. 
the pitch going for strike two. Well, Maldonado from behind the plate didn't even flinch on this one. Apparently, that jump for Altuve was that good. Let's catch a glimpse there. He leaves on first move, and I would say that Maldonado might have had a shot. Well, that time he just held the ball there for the umpire. He did get the call. Well, that's a shame if, as a catcher, you feel like you can't even move to get a call from an umpire. Mm -hmm. A double play still in order. Castro remaining at first as Altuve pilfered third base. Now it's three and two. Chris Carter's on deck. Brewers are 28 and 41. They're in last place in the NL Central, 16 games behind. Astros have won five of six. Now Castro takes off, and there's a line shot to right field. That'll get Altuve home. Here's the catch and right. And the throw goes back to first, and whoa! Castro barely beat it, and the run scored, but that was close to an inning ending double play. As Altuve steal a third, pays off on the sack fly by Martinez. Wise choice by right fielder Logan Schaefer firing back to first. That is only shot at trying to cut down a run here in this inning. You can see Castro going head down, but wisely looked up as Schaefer makes the catch. He knows the only shot he has is at first, and he makes it close. About 85 feet to get back for Jason Castro. There was. Now Carter puts one in the air to center. Gomez cruising over. And in the first inning, the Astros hustle their way to one run on one hit and leave one for a one nothing lead. Log on to CSNHouston.com and click on In Game Live to enhance your Astros experience via computer, smartphone, or tablet. Get in depth stats and join the social buzz. In Game Live only on CSNHouston.com. Eric Bedard back on the mound for the Astros here in the second and threw a car or season high, excuse me, 104 pitches in his last start. That was in a 2 1 win over the White Sox, outmatching Chris Sale. And after the game, Bo Porter talked about how. He's much stronger. He's feeling as good as he's felt in years. And talking to Bernard, he says, I'm just being much more consistent with the strike zone. Guys? Well, and that's been the comment we've been hearing from Doug Brocale about the Astros pitching staff in general during this turnaround month for the staff here since mid May and from the catchers as well. And Carlos Corporan saying tonight before the game, you know, these guys are just more confident now as a group. Ramos Ramirez leads it off. I guess what I would add to that a, a pitcher can say well I'm just being more consistent with the strike zone. Well you can't be more consistent with the strike zone if you're not more consistent with your delivery and all the mechanics that go with it and the work in between starts and 
every way you can prepare for a ball game. And, and so what I would say is apparently that that preparation has gotten sounder and more consistent for Eric Bedard. Swing and a miss there by Aramis Ramirez. A lot of times that takes place when a guy starts feeling more healthy. Well, he was not healthy in the spring. Pitched just a few innings in spring training, so it did take him longer to get himself up to speed compared to the other pitchers. And the Astros brought him along with that in mind. Swing and a miss there by Ramirez, and he whiffs on a curveball for strikeout number two for Bedard. Yeah, curveball has been a big part of what Eric Bedard's been able to do. You can talk about fastball and all that sort of thing, but you can see this year that the curveball has become a, a pitch that he's dropped off from. From last year, the amount of times that he would throw at the changeup has become a greater part of things. Uh, the cutter as well, and that's kind of a, a pitch that can be picked up as a slider, whatever you want to call it. But Eric uh, altering the usage of the, the different pitches now this year from what he did a year ago. Jonathan Lucroy is DHing tonight. There's strike one to Lucroy, who does the lion's share of the catching, but it's hit so well that his bat stays in the lineup. 271, six homers, 37 runs batted in for Lucroy, and the Brewers regard him in pretty much the same terms as the Astros regard Jason Castro, DHing when he doesn't catch. Lucroy was 0 for 4 last night. That's rolled out to first base for Pena, and he tosses to Bedard. Two outs. The Astros did take some pitchers' fielding practice. For batting practice today. That's not uh, a reflection of anything necessarily that's been happening in recent games. The Bull Porter tries to do it uh, once a home stand, maybe once every other home stand kind of thing. I think it's very wise. You, you run into those patches where guys just don't get it done from the hill. And you'd rather just avert those problems with a, a little bit of work here and there. Now, Betancourt. Who played third base last night shifts across the diamond to first at 216. He has eight homers. He's driven in 31. Ben Court one for three last night. There's a strike. He's one of five different Milwaukee first basemen to start at that position this year. All of them starting at first base for the first time in their careers. Very unusual situation there. Tap to shortstop. Coming in for Ronnie Cedeno. And that's six in a row set down by Eric Vidar. And Mark Appel will be joining us in just a moment. Killer bees and um, just some really great teams, but you know times change, and you know we have new players in the system. Players retire, um, and uh, you know I, I think just 
you know, doing my research a little bit once I was drafted by the Astros, just seeing their minor league minor league teams and you know even uh their major league team is is playing better over the last couple of weeks um you know i think the future is very exciting for houston mark appel signing his contract today with the astros carlos pena leads it off it's one to nothing astros he's just taking strike one and that's in tight from kyle Loesch to even the count of one and one carlos rammed a three-run homer wrapped it around the right field foul pole last night home run number seven of the year big swing in the bat for carlos Driven in 21 and has a 223 average. Has two career homers off Loesch. Loesch deals a strike. That makes it one and two. That ball really jumped in a hurry when Pena hit the three run homer in the fifth inning last night. Gave the Astros a five to one lead at the time. They went on to win it 10 to one. That crowds him and it's a two ball two strike count now Here's a look at that swing at the fastball sometimes the fastball up in the strike zone could be tough on Carlos with that uppercut swing but not right here and that was the one that was really the difference maker in the ball game the grand slam by Dominguez that was the icing on the cake there's a change for a strikeout for Loesch he has a dandy Yeah, sometimes it's that changeup that's the big strikeout pitch. Good arm speed will create that. He has thrown that change about 21% of the time so far this season with a batting average against it of 200. Justin Maxwell, 228, one homer, six runs batted in, re entered the lineup last night, drew a couple of walks and scored a run, going 0 for 2. Strike one to J Max. Hope you got in to hear his interview comments with Julia Morales right before the ball game. And he senses a more confident Astros team since the one he left in April. One hopper to shortstop. Gene Segura takes care of the out, and that's two down for Loesch. And Matt Dominguez will be next. He has taken over the club RBI lead now. With a big uh, career high five RBI game last night, including his first major league grand slam. Matt going two for three in that game. And he now has 10 homers, 40 runs batted in with a 236 average. That's ball one to Matt. Very potent number eight hitter for the Astros. Not too many number eight hitters are leading their clubs and runs batted in at this point of the season. Number of third baseman may be and that's what Matt Dominguez is now starting to become is that corner guy that you can count on for runs. Well now he's at 298 to this point at Minute Maid Park with eight of his 10 homers here and 27 runs batted in of his 40 in this ballpark. Two and one. That grand slam last night and again his first the Astros first this year. Just a towering drive that got out by plenty. Goes for a high pitch and that one will curl foul. And the second deck. A two ball two strike count for Matt. All ten of his home runs in the last 35 games for Matt. First time for the Astros. Three run homer and a grand slam in one game since August 2nd of 07. Up the middle, and that will roll on into center field for a two out single for Matt Dominguez. That was that vaunted changeup, but left up a bit, and it allowed Dominguez to get to see it a little bit better. See the changeup in the location, not exactly. Where Loesch or any other pitcher would like it. Hit number two for the Astros. Ronnie Cedeno is in the lineup, sporting very good career numbers against Loesch. A 381 career batting average for Ronnie against the right hander. 248 this season. He has one homer. He's driven in 10. Marwin Gonzalez started last night at shortstop. And he had an active defensive game and also put down a squeeze bunt for the Astros' second run last night. Strike for Loesch. 
Astros are five and three in interleague play. The Brewers are two and eight. Eight hits and 21 career at bats for Ronnie. Loesch, the last time he faced the Astros was last September 18th in St. Louis. Seven shutout innings and a four to one win. Earlier in the year, he won another game in St. Louis against Houston. The seven innings of two run baseball. Giovanni Gallardo goes tomorrow for the Brew Crew. Their staff ace. Gallardo has excellent career statistics against the Astros. It's a shot, it goes foul. One ball, two strikes. Well, the most recent staff ace that the Astros were able to beat, Chris Sale, and he was terrific for the White Sox, but the Astros hung in there and we're able to scratch it out out in the end and those are the types of ball games that when you're able to win them and, and kind of start getting that momentum going you, you really have a chance to turn the corner. That might be the favorite game of all Astros fans if you took a poll on this home stand and perhaps for quite some time on back because with the numbers that sale brought into that game and the way he was throwing that night they really had to scratch and claw for that one. But he struck out 14 and the Astros still won the ball game. Yeah, that was really a rarity. He did not give up an earned run. That one goes foul as well. And Eric Bedard was the winner on that occasion, two to one. Eric didn't give up an earned run either in his six innings. That's been kind of the pattern for the Astros' wins here the last few weeks. Low scoring games. Very well pitched. They're surviving with a minimum of offense. Ooh, the rain is pouring down. See that coming, did you? Looks like a perfect day for a ball game in here. <laughs> you imagine how many rain delays we have avoided. <laughs> two and two. Yeah, it looks like it's coming down good. Just don't miss my yard this time. No, you're getting hammered. That's one case where I'm thrilled to get hammered. <laughs> yeah, we do need that. In the air foul. Isn't that a delight though to be watching a ball game and watching it pour? Just sit here and laugh at the rain. <laughs> All these other teams have rainouts and double headers causing inconvenience, and the Astros just don't have to worry about that sort of thing. Mother Nature, you've got no impact on us here. I guess I should go easy with that kind of comment. Yeah. Down to shortstop. Segura with a quick flip to second. Whoa, very close there as Dominguez hustled, but Weeks got the call on the toss from Segura, and it's 1 0 Astros.
The paperwork along with scouting director Mike Elias, and he has joined the Houston Astros organization. Very thrilling time for everybody involved in this, including us, and uh, nice to meet you, Mark. And it actually happened pretty quickly. Right after graduation, it got done. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm, I'm glad it got done quickly, and, uh, you know, I'm excited to get out and play. Uh, it's been quite the whirlwind of, you know, emotions, especially going through graduation on, on Sunday, and uh, all the family was out to see that, and, and then coming here on, you know, the day after, and then signing today. Eric Bedard throwing, and there's ball one to Brandon Barnes, and as you now are greeted by this organization, you've had a chance to meet some of the major league players, spend a little time with your family here. It's all come together for a guy who was born right here in Houston. Fun time for you. How the boys in the uh, the big league uniforms treat you today? Oh, they they were great. Yeah, very very hospitable and uh, you know just a lot of fun. A great great group of guys from the guys that I met. No intimidation. Nothing uh, <laughs> nothing laid on you at all. Uh, Bud Norris is is quite the character, and he was giving me a hard time going to Stanford. Ah, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Shame on somebody for going to Stanford. Now, you had not met Jason Castro until today. Is that correct? I had met him a few times. Uh, you know, he would come back in the off season to, you know, take some hacks in the cages, work mm -hmm. out. Um, so I met him a few times there, but, you know, it, I got to talk to him a little bit more today. Well, fans are having quite a time savoring that Stanford battery. There's a looping single in center field, and uh, Bedard gives up a leadoff hit to Martin Maldonado. Well, Mark, we've watched plenty of you on the field for Stanford, and all of it very impressive. As you watch Major League Baseball, how close do you feel like you are right now? Um, yeah, I, I feel like I, I could, you know. Go I'll, ahead and say what you really mean. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, as a competitor, I want to go out and compete right away. Um, but, you know, I understand that, you know, I, it, it's all it's not completely in my control. I can only control going out there and competing every single, every single day. And, uh... You know, that's what I'm going to focus on, and, and, you know, when I get to Houston, I'll get to Houston, and, you know, hopefully I can help the Astros be a really good team in the future. You know what that sounds like to me? It sounds like you feel deep down inside that given the opportunity, you might compete and do it well at a, at a level higher than most people might guess right now. Is that uh, fair to say? I, I would I would hope so. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I, I, I trust my abilities, and, uh, you know, I, I, I love just getting to go out there and, and compete. Um but, you know, it, it like like I said, a, a lot of it is, uh, you know, out of my control as far as the timetable um, to get to Houston. And Prince fouls it. It's 0 and 2. Well, you'll go to Florida now to get in shape. How long has it been since you pitched in a game? It, it was about three weeks ago or so. Um, last game of the season against UCLA. Uh, we actually won the series against them and uh, you know, it's it's funny sitting at sitting at home on our couches watching them in the College World Series, thinking you know we could be there, um, but you know they're they're a really good team, uh, and we're rooting for them. So with not pitching for a few weeks, does that serve as a disadvantage for you when you do get back on the field, or is it maybe an advantage in a chance to kind of rest the arm a little bit? I I, I think it I think it'll help in the long run. Um, getting to rest the arm is is a big plus, obviously. Um, but you know, I, I think uh, I think it'll take me, you know, maybe a couple extra days to get back in throwing shape. Um, but you know, like I said, I'm I'm in no rush uh, necessarily to uh, to go out there. I want to make sure I'm 100% when I you know step on the mound for the first time out in Florida. What are your strengths? Maybe your weaknesses as well as you see them right now. Um, you know, I, I think uh, my com my competitive nature is a strength, um, and. You know, stuff I've been working on this season, um, including, you know, my, my uh, fastball location, my off-speed pitches. Um, I, I just feel like I, I've really improved um, most areas of my game uh, over the last year. Prince hits a grounder. Let's see if this is a double play. Altuve makes it a 6-4-3 double play. That looks pretty good behind you when you get up here, right? <laughs> yeah, that, that is good. Uh, yeah, I love how uh, I think the Astros have they've been turning double plays like crazy lately and uh, you know having a great defense behind you is always a plus. How was your defense at Sanford this year? Uh, it, it was pretty good. Uh, obviously not major league quality but um, you know 
We, well, lost, we hope the guys are not <laughs> listening to you right now. Well, no, we, we, I mean, we lost, we lost a few games because of our defense, but we also won a few games because of our defense. Um, you know, I, I think the, the difference between college and major leagues is the consistency um, of, of the, the play behind you and the, you know, the offense and everything. And I think that's what really plagued our team at Stanford this year was just inconsistency. You made a rare decision to go back to school, even though uh, you had been drafted by the Pirates uh, with a number eight pick. And it sure worked out, didn't it? Uh, yes, sir. I, I couldn't. I don't think I could have orchestrated it any better. Um, you know, I, I just really see God's hand in it all. Uh, you know, knowing that I was kind of taking a leap of faith, going going back to school, and um, just really being able to focus and uh, worry about the things that I can control. And you know, I, I couldn't control whether the Astros would take me this year or not. And you know, it all turned out great. Well, what? you could control getting your degree, which you did. And you could control improving as a pitcher, which you did. Yes, sir. <laughs> I was just going to say, whatever goes on this year for you, wherever you wind up and, and all that sort of thing, what sort of thing do you want to say to your family members when it's all said and done this year about what you've been able to accomplish in your first year of pro ball? Uh, well, I think the first thing I'd tell them is um, how thankful I am of their support and everything because I don't think it was an e easy decision. Um, the decision I made, I don't think it was easy on them either. Um, and, and them just, you know, supporting me, trusting me. Um, you know, a few were skeptical when I decided to go back to school. Um, and, and you know, lo and behold, I'm, you know, sitting here up up with you guys at, <laughs> at Minute Maid Park. Uh, Isn't that amazing? It, it's incredible. <laughs> and, you know, for a Houston-born guy to be the first guy in their pick and coming yeah. back to play for his own. Team. Congratulations! Welcome Thank to the you. organization. It's a real blessing. Thank you, Mark. You. All the best to you, Mark. One nothing Astros. Nothing. The Astros will take on Albert Pujols, Mike Trout, and the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim on Saturday, June 29th at 310. Be sure to get to Minute Maid Park early as 10,000 fans will receive a white home replica jersey courtesy of Champion Energy Services. Call 1-877-9ASTROS to get your tickets now. Guys. Thanks, Julia. I will see a lot of those jerseys that night. Saturday, June 29th at 310. The Angels in town. Brandon Barnes. First up here, the home third inning. He had a fly ball to center in the first. Eric Bedard has faced the minimum through three with a one nothing lead. Now Kyle Loesch back to the mound. And there's strike one to Barnes. Impressive young man, huh? He really is. It'll be fun to watch his progress. There's a ball to Brandon, and it's a one ball, one strike count. We've had some action up on Tal's Hill. This homestand. Brandon with his catch the other night, and then last night, Gomez. With a big time play there. If you had done the picnic recently, you'd have been on Tal's Hill, wouldn't you? <laughs> oh, yeah. You know it. Wanted to. 
Brewers, of course, trading Zach Greinke last year, picked up Gene Segura in that deal, and a couple of minor league pitchers, one of whom is a Triple A and pitching well right now. So then Loesch coming in to join them this year, and it just has not worked out to the tune of 18 wins and 30 losses for their starting rotation. Renicky hoping his club can put a run together. They'll go back home after the finale of this road trip tomorrow. They're three and four on this current trip. They're eight and eight in June. Pulled through the hole into left field, and Barnes is on with a single. Three hits for the Astros. He's aboard for Altuve now. And the Barnes could be a real difference maker as the Astros move forward. If he can keep this bat going, playing solid defense in center field, then picking up some stolen bases. That is a big key. He measures his lead now, and Altuve reached on the infield hit, stole third base, and scored on the JD Martinez sack fly. Comes around again. Barnes drawing a throw. Barnes is six for 11 in steals. Ardo takes a 13 and 3 lifetime record against the Astros into tomorrow's game. That's a 110 start, and then the Astros are off to Chicago after the game. Lucas Harrell goes for Houston. There's a liner between third and short. Altuve hits that same spot, and it's first and second. Nobody out. Altuve two for two tonight. Jose needs a, a nice hot spurt. Get himself back over 300. Start drawing more attention in terms of the All Star vote. Still didn't have everything into this swing, but barreled it up nicely. Now, Jason Castro has two men on, nobody out. He took a walk at the first inning. One, he really let the bat fly. Take a little walk out of the batter's box after that one. And Castro has the capability here this season to do some things that no Astros catcher has ever done in terms of power production. It's 0 2. This kind of floats that semi changeup on the inside corner there. Taken a little bit off the fastball. I was really glad to hear that Mark Appel is a guy that already has developed a change up and feels like it's a big part of his repertoire. Yes. Well, that was uh, one thing that put him at the top of the list for the Astros. The polish that he has acquired. There's a grounder foul. You know, it's it's so fascinating for those who, who follow this sport closely coming up to draft time to read about all the Different possibilities. Read the scouting reports, and then uh, scouting director Mike Elias was explaining that Sigma Dell, the director of decision sciences, and his crew have a way of normalizing these statistics. We'll say you have a Mark Appel playing for Stanford. You have a Jonathan Gray pitching for Oklahoma. They play in different conferences, one stronger than the other, and then maybe you're looking at a high school kid in Georgia. The level of competition. How do you put all that together? They really do run some very detailed numbers to try to level the playing field when they evaluate all these various possibilities. I don't know what the methods are to do that. I think anytime you're you're comparing this player to that, you're always kind of mentally running those 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 difference makers. But uh, yeah, you, you hope there's something maybe a little more concrete with which to measure players. Mm -hmm. Swing and a miss, and that's a big strikeout for Kyle Loesch. His second. J.D. Martinez will try to provide a hit for the Astros here. He provided a sack fly in the first. Just good old high heat up and in to get Jason Castro. Martinez hit his fly ball to right field, and Altuve was able to score on it from third base for his 25th RBI.
Now Barnes edging off second. Wonder if he might try to steal third as Altuve did. Not going, and it's ball one. You get to thinking about it from second base, and it has to be more than just a I think I can make it kind of a mode. It's I know I can make it before you take off. That's true. One out provides that opportunity many base stealers like to steal third. It can be a difference maker if they do it. Now it's one ball, one strike. Brandon Barnes didn't appear to be deterred much at all there by second baseman Ricky Weeks darting into the bag. Now with this setup, unlike before when it was Altuve at second and Castro at first, it's Barnes at second, Altuve at first. So if Barnes were to go, Altuve probably would go for second as well. Weeks going to the back. They're going. That's a line shot, but it's caught. And that's going to be an easy double play. That ball was rocked by Martinez, caught by Segura, and it's a six unassisted double play. Tough luck for the Astros. No runs, two hits, and a man left. We move to the fourth inning, and it's 1 0 Houston. Evan Eschenfelder brings the heat with special guests and in-depth analysis on Sports Talk Live every night at 5 p.m. only on Comcast Sportsnet. Guys. Yes, he does. Thanks, Julia. Julia's getting all packed for Chicago. Her first trip to the Windy City. Ricky Weeks leads it off here in the fourth inning. Eric Bedard puts it in there for strike one. Weeks popped to third, opening this ball game. Weeks what do you know about the Chicago weather this time of year? Julia's been checking. She was on her iPhone. I need that report. All right, she'll give it to you. Oh, and two. Well, pitch is right there at the knees for Bedard. We're going to get that weather update from Julia right after this Ricky Weeks at bat, which will be a ground ball to shortstop for out number one. That's what I call a forecast. As long as we're in the forecasting mode, <laughs> why not give it a spin? There's a chance of rain, Ash. Ooh, man, you are all over it. Get ready, <laughs> Ronnie Cedeno. <laughs> oh, strike three call is even better for Eric Bedard. Julia? You guys wanted a weather update, but I. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather talk about the guy coming up to back because I have no idea what's going on out there with this roof on top of me. Gene Segura, a guy who's been great for the Brewers this year. Ten home runs, 20 stolen bases, and came over in a trade with the Angels. That's when uh, the Angels wanted Grinky. They're giving away a young, talented shortstop in Segura. Seemed to be a good idea at the time for both clubs, but then the Angels weren't able to lock down Grinky, so they lost this guy who's been dynamic 
for the Brewers. And they lost Grinky. You see right here in the trade. Yeah. I bet the Angels are still hurting over this one right here. Segura, you see his numbers. Very, very good there in Milwaukee. Guys. Yeah. Brewers are thrilled with a man with 90 hits. Tied for fifth in the majors. But the Angels did get Josh Hamilton. Well, that's true. And uh, we're trying to figure out what that means at this point. <laughs> I think they're learning. Okay. Well, Segura stole his 20th base last night to go with 10 homers. He's the only player in the majors with 10 homers and 20 steals right now. And he's played a good brand of shortstop. Nicely spotted again by Bedard. But he's sharp tonight. Uh, some of the sharpness is not paying off yet. Three and zero here to a guy who can hit for some power, and it's a strike. Ninety hits, only Yadier Molina, ninety-two has more in the National League. Molina is really a force with the Cardinals, isn't he? If not for Buster Posey last year, I think Yadier Molina might have been the MVP in the National League. That's a good point. My ball out to right center field. Maxwell digging for it. Maxwell back in front of the bullpen wall with the running backhanded catch. Good play for out number two. A reminder now as you enjoy a cold one to look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game. It's brought to you by Miller Light. Well, you have two rangy outfielders there when you have Maxwell and right and Barnes in center. Some pretty nice coverage. Carlos Gomez hit a fly ball to Maxwell his first time up. They don't call him cargo do they. No that one's already been uh, apparently patented. Okay. But he's playing like somebody who might be able to take that name away. <laughs> he sure is this ball one. The Rockies. Trying to fill in for the loss of Troy Tulowitzki. That cargo and Tulo combination was quite something. He did not pull the trigger, and it's two balls, no strikes on Gomez. And yet the Astros had their way with the Rockies this year. Yeah. Well, they're in a pretty good run right now. Five wins in the last six games, 17 and 15 since mid May. On to Chicago next. The Cubs are in the doldrums this year. It's three and zero. Oh. Brewers are eleven and twenty in their division, the National League Central. Infield shifted around on Gomez here. Gomez with a big cut fouls it back. There's your basic three zero hack. You get the green light. Don't try to flip one to right field. Go ahead and juice it. Watch this swing. Wow. You could hear him grunting. Yes, you could. The Hunter Pence type effort. It's the kind of swing where the manager on the bench will say, if I give you the green light, that's what I want to see, guys. Yep. And another one, three and two, and Bedard now has worked it full. I think cargo two here needs a chin strap. Major League hitter three reps like that, and it's going to be interesting. He takes ball four. A two out walk. First of the game for Bedard. Ramos Ramirez back in the second inning on that pitch by pitch brought to you by Steel Dealers. Ramirez fouls off that fastball. It's kept nicely down around the knees. Then that sweeping breaking ball down and in and another one and a nice quick strike out of Ramirez. That was the second of three on the night for Bedard. Ramirez has been bothered by a left knee problem. He was on the disabled list for a time. And he is not running well. And in fact, he's been told not to really bust it up the line on a ground ball. So he'll try to get through this season. And uh, from what we're hearing, 
know he doesn't want to have surgery so that's the goal is to. Is try to make his way through the season without that he was on the DL. From uh, April 6th through May 2nd with a sprained left knee missing 23 games. Injured the knee sliding. He's been a very good run producer down through the years. This ball one. Seventh on the all time major league list in homers as a third baseman 342. One of the challenges of the everyday grind of major league baseball. Those injuries that. You try to play through Troy Tulowitzki you were just talking about him was dealing with a, a groin issue and it was the same story they didn't want him running hard. Big cut there. It's one and one. Ramirez has 42 career homers against the Astros. 142 runs batted in and he is three for five with a homer against Bedard. He'll turn 35 in another few days. Round ball third, Dominguez. Throws to Pena. No runs, no hits, and a man left. Middle of the fourth inning, 1 0 Houston. Off the homestand tomorrow. That's in the afternoon against the Brewers. Come see Castro, Dominguez, and the rest of your Astros face off against the Brew Crew. Call 1 877 9 Astros or visit Astros.com to get your tickets right now. It's 1 0. The Astros lead it as Chris Carter comes up in the bottom of the fourth inning. Lays off the breaking pitch from Kyle Lowe. There's Paul 1 to Chris. Really swung the bat well last night. Ball jumped off his bat with a fifth inning single and a seventh inning RBI double. He takes that one as well. Chris Carter had that good night last night. Hung out the rope to left field, and he wasn't just pulling it. This shot to right field, maybe as impressive as we've seen from Chris for some time, despite the home runs he's been hitting. Trying to stay on that pitch long. Took a couple of pitches off the plate. Now swinging and it goes to 2 1. It's really one of the keys for Chris if he can just lay off those pitches he cannot handle, and we say that all the time about hitters. That's in the air and behind second base, Carlos Gomez pursues it in toward the infield. One out. He's got a little style involved, doesn't he? He is a stylish outfielder, yes. Very flashy. Makes a lot of tremendous catches. On the highlight reel all the time, Ash. One of those showed up last night. Jason Castro real pleased to be the guy that drove it out there, but how about that play? 
hit Towels Hill and still be able to focus on the baseball. Not an easy feat. And a little style involved. Carlos Pena looks at ball one. Well, we talk all the time about Towels Hill. People have different opinions on it, but we have seen some really highlight real catches on that hill. And that's what distinguishes this ballpark from others. We've seen outfielders fall. We've seen him make great catches. Loesch with the comebacker takes care of out number two. Well, I told you my opinion last night. I kind of like Towels Hill based on the distance it is from home plate. This is the classic of all time. <laughs> what a catch that is. And the smile that follows. Yeah. But his glove was actually facing the wall. I don't right. know how he pulled that off. It was a phenomenal catch. You're Lance, right. Lance had a way of pulling off a whole lot of things. Watch where the glove is facing. Toward the wall. That's absolutely amazing. <laughs> the feet are and the legs are trying to deal with Tal's Hill and the brain's just not catching on. Yeah. Ball one to J Max. He grounded out short in the second inning. That was truly a phenomenal play, considering all the elements involved for Lance Berkman, who did not play a whole lot of center field in his career. But you know what? When he did, I thought he did a quite a nice job. Well, he's just one of those special athletes. One ball, one strike. Wouldn't necessarily prefer him in the outfield if given a choice of playing him at first base. Look at this target. One and two. Maldonado down in the Tony Pena like splits. Benito Santiago and Tony Pena probably the two guys that I most think about with, with those uh, ballet induced positions. I'm not sure. You ever do that one, Ash? Well, I couldn't even begin. I would have never gotten up. And I'd do that if uh, somebody had picked me off from behind, but no getting up. Scotty would have helped you up. <laughs> yeah, if he thought he could take some money on the golf course the next day. <laughs> Danny Darwin would have lent a hand. Three balls and two strikes. Dr. Death. Yeah, that was a pretty good crew of guys. Nolan might have been helping. He'd have thought of something witty to say about why I couldn't get up. <laughs> Stood there and laughed at me and kept his hands in his pockets. Ground ball wide of third. Larry Anderson certainly would like to have worked with you now. You, you know, I would love to tell you what Larry would have done while I was down there, but uh, yeah, what a group. Larry would have been trolling a $5 bill across the ground to see if anybody would pick it up. Charlie Kerfeld would have been involved in some hijinks. Would have been some ribs and chicken involved there. A strikeout ends the fourth inning. Kyle Loesch keeps it close. One to nothing Astros to four.
Coast, Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, Oklahoma, and New Mexico viewers, listen up. Comcast Sportsnet covers the entire five-state region, and we want your story ideas. Email us your ideas at regionalroundup at comcastsportsnet.com. I'm with a very special guest. We've been ta- we talked to Mark Appel earlier, the Astros' number one pick this year. Now we're going to hear from Mom. This is Sandra Appel with me now. And, Sandra, what has this day been like for you as Mom getting to watch Mark? It's been wonderful. It's been crazy, fun, and exciting all at the same time. So You've got your colors on. You look amazing, by the way. <laughs> Love the orange necklace and the blue. Y'all are from here. So just the, the crazy part about him coming back to his hometown, he's been talking about it a lot. But, but for you and, and his father, what's it like to, for him to come and sign with a hometown team? I did not realize it's so amazing that most kids didn't, never get a chance to do that and that Mark having this opportunity is amazing. Uh, just a blessing for him, for our family, for the grandparents, for the cousins. Right. It's just awesome. You, you named a bunch of people that are here today. They're all visiting. I know a lot of families here. Who you, you mentioned some of them, but do you have a big group here? I'm, I can imagine. We have eight people staying at our house tonight, so it's a little crazy. <laughs> and uh, But it's people from uh, not only close family friends, uh, but also we have Mark's um, summer coach or his uh, parents from uh, his summer league his freshman year come here and then his mentor from Stanford who uh, discipled him is here as well. It's like a a reunion. It is a reunion. At the same same time when he was signing today what was going through your mind and your heart? Well I was just very proud of him. I'm thankful that he had this opportunity that he could come and enjoy um, Coming back to Houston, it's always been his heart's desire, and to have that come full circle is pretty exciting. Thank you so much for taking the time, and enjoy the rest of the day and the rest of your son's career. This is going to be a lot of fun for you. I'm looking forward to it. (laughs) All right, Brownie. Thanks, Julia. Interesting conversation there with Sandra Appel. Two balls, two strikes here. And that's strike three. Eric Bedard. Did you see that, Brownie? Yes, I, I just saw a young man become a millionaire. Oh, a lot of hard work got him there, and a lot of hard work will keep him going for a long time. Eric Bedard just continues to paint it very well. Bedard at age 34, having a resurgent type season after going seven and 14 for Pittsburgh with a 5.01 ERA, and there's Paul one to Betancourt. He grounded a shortstop his first time up. Bedard was a sixth round pick by Baltimore, 99. Born in Canada. Pulled the third, Matt Dominguez right there. Two outs. Like that last start for Bedard against the White Sox, he's making it look rather easy. And he can do that. At Tommy John surgery 10 years ago. He's been an opening day starter twice. Shoulder surgery as well. Maldonado the batter. Singled in the third. That's ball one. He's been one of two Milwaukee base runners in this game. Brewers are 12 and 21 on the road. They'll go back home for about a week after tomorrow's game. Down foul, and it's a one ball, one strike count. Well, they've been known for a lot of slugging teams down through the years. Harvey's wall bangers back in 82 going to the World Series. Great hitters like Paul Molitor, Bob and Young. Boy, they had a punch, didn't they? Cecil Cooper. Don Money. One and two. Pretty good name for a guy in a clutch situation, isn't it? Yeah, he's money. And they were great sign stealers back in their day. It was a crafty bunch. They were they were really good and, and they had the power you talk about, but 
You're right. They they found every way they could to take advantage. Mm. Read a story about that the other day. Pretty interesting. Two and two. The Angels were playing the Brewers, and the Brewers had their signs. And Bob Boone was the Angels catcher. And uh, pitcher was, uh, I believe it was Jim Slayton. Doesn't really matter who he was. But anyway, the pitcher said, Well, what do you want to do, Bob? He said, Just throw whatever you want to. I'm not going to give signs. So he did not give signs the rest of the game. And they won the game. Hmm. But the pitcher was depressed because he said, Boone never had a pass ball all night. My, my career is over. My stuff isn't good enough <laughs> to get by the catcher. <laughs> One nothing Astros. On his Astros jersey, general manager Jeff Luno doing the honors. And his mother Sandra, who was just on with Julia. Those witnessing the happy scene here at Minute Maid Park. That uni looks good with a tie. I don't know if it's going to catch on with the rest of the guys, but it looks very nice. One nothing Astros. Matt Dominguez leads it off against Kyle Loesch. Taking ball one. Matt singled up the middle in the second inning. Four hits for the Astros. They've all been singles. Just one single for Milwaukee through five against Eric Bedard. It's 2 0. So at age uh, 22, Matt Dominguez drove in five in a game. Jeffrey Leonard did that for the Astros when he was 23. Cesar Cedeno did that at age 21 for Houston. Dominguez with a fly ball to center. Caught by Gomez. This moment in history is brought to you by MD Anderson making cancer history. June 19th of 1972, Larry Durker hurls a one hitter to blank the Mets three to nothing. Duffy Dyer's third inning single is the lone blemish on Durker's night. Tommy Helms delivers four hits to lead the Strohs offense. The day before, Jerry Royce had tossed a one-hitter at the Phillies. The back-to-back one-hitters time Major League Mark and establish a club record. That guy was pretty good. Oh, yeah. Now, Ronnie Cedeno takes a look at ball one. Correcting Dominguez's age, he's 23 now. The Astros are 63 and 39 here at Minute Maid Park against the Brewers. Off the end of the bat, it's a one ball, one strike count for Kyle Loesch, who is two and six despite a 3.84 ERA. Haven't seen Dirk out of the ballpark here recently since his no. re emergence with the club. No, we have not. He must be on vacation. 
Uh, there's another one through that five six hole into left field. Cedeno chimes in. Barnes and out too. They got their hits to that area back in the third. But it's fresh as can be to see Larry Durker on the hill and blowing hitters away. Kind of a, almost a Don Drysdale kind of a delivery. Yeah. Long arm action. Yep. Yeah, that was awfully good until the shoulder went bad. And that's his no hit game against Montreal. Is that Joe Ferguson behind the dish? I believe it was. Throw goes over to first on Cedeno, who's two for two in steals. Brandon Barnes singled in the third. Brandon's one for two. Kyle Osh was winless in May, 0 and 4 with a 6.51 ERA. Off the plate for a ball on Barnes. In this ballpark, Loesch is 3 and 5 with a 4.06. He had to find a workout partner in spring training because he didn't sign until late spring. With the Brewers. Kind of a weird feeling not to be in camp. When having the type of career Loesch had had, and being a free agent, suppose that a player estimates he would be in a lot of demand, and then he's sitting there in mid March without a job. That's a bit of a shocker to some. I bet he was stunned to be 16 and 3 a year ago with the Cardinals who go into postseason play. 33 starts, most in the league. Yeah, he did a lot of good things. It's two balls and a strike. Major League Baseball Diversity Summit took place today at George R. Brown Convention Center. Commissioner Bud Selig in attendance, along with representatives of all the major league clubs. Brewers owner is here, Mark Atanasio. Kyle Loesch was seventh in the Cy Young Award voting last year in the National League. He's thrown 70.6% first pitch strikes this year. It's the highest among all National League qualifiers. Runner going. Ball's hit in the air and. Daniel will just take a look at it as the left fielder Prince comes over and handles out number two. Altuve comes up. We've mentioned Scott Boris, the famed agent that represents Mark Appel. He also represents Kyle Loesch, and I wonder how much that might have factored into uh, maybe the demands being too high for Loesch in the offseason. Not too sure about that. Scott is here tonight, by the way. Altuve got an infield hit to short in the first. Single through the left side of the infield in the third. Scott was uh, saying during batting practice for the Astros really did well with their pick last year. Carlos Correa number one and then this year with a foul for the first base. And they got him. He went back in standing up and Betancourt put the tag on Cedeno for the out to end the fifth inning with no runs a hit. And after five it's one to nothing Houston.
nothing, and it's time for our progressive fan of the game. I've got the awesome goodie bag with me right now. And I've got Alvaro, who is my fan of the game. Got the goodie bag. Alvaro, do you play baseball? I play baseball in all darts. Who do you play for? All darts. The All Stars. The Astros or the All Stars, both. You're an All Star and an Astro, and you're also the progressive fan of the game. So take this from me. Congratulations. Brownie, he's precious. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a cute little guy, isn't he? So you can just hang out there for a while and talk to him. And there's a foul ball by Prince, and uh, Justin Maxwell comes over toward the right field line. Oh, fair ball for uh, number one on one pitch. Well, Prince, who hit into a double play, puts one in the air, and Bedard gets out number one. Julia gets all the good gigs. She really does. Julia is going to really be a valuable assistance to us in Chicago with those starts at 120. Stay out of the Ivy. Mm, that might be a feature. <laughs> Logan Schaefer struck out earlier. Where is Andre Dawson now? Yeah. That's ball one to Schaefer. Paul Porter has already schooled his outfielders. If a ball disappears in that ivy in the outfield, don't try to reach in for it. Just throw your hands up in the air so the umpires will declare it an automatic double. One ball, one strike. There you go. There's your ivy. You bet. Andre's right in there. Ash, you were not around for this, but it was probably a couple of years ago. Not to encourage this sort of activity, but a fan jumped out of the stands, ran across the outfield, jumped up on top of the wall, climbed the flagpole, and was going through that ivy type stuff and almost escaped the ballpark before being apprehended and taken to the cooler. Two balls, two strikes. Felt like he had it worked out. It, I wouldn't have been surprised if he did that. Maybe he had a change of outfit that he could put on while he was in the Ivy and not be recognized once he got to the seats. We were looking for the cape, but we couldn't find one. <laughs> no, do not encourage that sort of thing. No. Swing and a miss. Schaefer strikes out. Yeah, time again for the pitch by pitch presented by Steel Dealers. It's all about Eric Bedard. And he is having a solid night once again, Eric Bedard. Has just picked up his fourth strikeout of the night. He has been bending it like Beckham and spotting it right on the edges, all adding up to a shutout effort here as he works into the sixth inning. Well, one after another, he has been good. Ricky Weeks is over oh, tonight. Yeah. Sorry, Brownie, just uh, completely botched the number seven strikeouts seven. now. Is that what it is? Yes, yes. up to seven. Looking on the wrong side of the ledger here. It's okay. Strike one to Weeks. He struck out one of those occasions in the fourth, looking. Foul back. No balls, two strikes to Ricky Weeks. Bedard now has uh, his longest. String of consecutive homerless innings since a 24 inning streak for the Pirates in April and May last year. He's up over 24 innings now without giving up a home run. He's allowed 10 for the season. It's a one ball, two strike count. Eric's ERA. Nothing to write home about at game time, 4.82, but that really doesn't describe the way he's been pitching lately. And tonight, another one that falls into that excellent category so far with 72 pitches at work. He's gotten some no decisions in some of his best efforts, in fact. Line into right center field. A hit for weeks. Only the second for the Brewers tonight. Don't forget for Eric Bedard, his third outing on the year. He worked just a third of an inning at Oakland, allowed six runs in that one. It was just one of those miserable days. 
And it could have done in a lot of pitchers. It did do in for some good period of time. The statistics. So he's been still working at trying to improve those numbers, and he's been doing a great job. Now, no complaints by anybody in the Astros about Eric Bedard's work. This is his 13th start. Segura is 0 for 2 with a strikeout looking and a fly ball to right. Bedard, after the start against the Yankees on the road May 1st, had an ERA of 8.20. Call has gone out to the bullpen. That's a liner off the end of the bout out into left center field. Weeks will go to second and hold there as Barnes comes up with it on the single by Segura. And Segura continues to be a hitting machine. That's 91 hits. But the Angels wince with every one of those hits. Oh, you know it. They got a rental pitcher in return, Granke. And now they've followed that up with a record of 31 and 40 so far this year. Little glove talk at the mound as Gomez comes up. Well, after a couple of hits, this is not the guy you want to see coming to the plate. There's that trade involving Seguro. Brinky going on. And Segura. Wow. Just he, he has. I don't know that you can say he's come out of nowhere. I don't think that would be true, but don't imagine the Angels envision he was going to be the player he is this year. John Helwig, the right-handed pitcher listed on the bottom of the screen, is doing well at AAA also from Milwaukee. You could be seeing him in the big leagues fairly soon. Gomez hit the fly ball to right in the first. He walked in the fourth. Hop toward the left side and Dominguez comes over. Makes a good play to end the six with no runs, two hits, two men left. Eric Bedard with a shutout in the works. And only one run of support, one nothing Houston. Sportsnet is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Now's your chance to go big at Jack in the Box. Try Jack's Big Stack Burger. Two jumbo beef patties stacked with onion rings, cheese, and pickles. And by Progressive. Visit Progressive.com today. Well, we had a downpour earlier tonight outside Minute Maid Park. Jose Altuve fouls back that first pitch here in the bottom of the sixth inning. They strike one. Well, you just whetted my appetite. I know that. Oh, yeah. Still plenty of time to down one, Ash. 
I'll go for it. Just provide me the opportunity. Two knocks for Altuve tonight. Lays off that, and it's a one ball, one strike count. About time for him to pick up the pace a little bit, don't you think? Yeah, it's been quiet for a while. Uh, even despite a hitting streak where a lot of the games were one hit games. Broken bat, Looper goes foul. One and two. Well, let's see. Uh, two hits in the final game against the White Sox. Two hits in the first game of that series. No, he's clicking along. It's not been a bad month of June, but he's not sizzling the way he was at the outset of the season. Yeah, I think that's probably the way to put it. For a lot of guys, it would be a nice stretch, and probably people would be saying, you know, the guy's doing a nice job. He's picking up a hit in most ball games, but for Jose Altuve, shy of maybe the, the bar that he has set for himself. He's a 340 lifetime hitter against Milwaukee. Fouls that one back. 76 pitches for Kyle Loesch, 77 now. The Orioles pounced on the Tigers and beat them 13 to 3 today. Chris Tillman won. He is 8 and 2, beating Rick Porcello. He's 4 and 4. Chris Davis hit two homers, giving him 26 home runs. He has gone absolutely berserk. Wow. It's two balls, two strikes. Got over 20 doubles. He's leading the major leagues in total bases. He's, he's just tearing it up, and that batting average way above anything he's done in the past. Altuve looks at it. It's a full count now. Vince Scully is not making the trip with the Dodgers back east. He does not travel back east anymore. So he's taking over the Dodgers Twitter account for their series with the Yankees. <laughs> really? Yeah. No kidding. Yep. Nice going, Vin. Yeah. Staying up with things. Line shot left field. That's a three hit game for Altuve. He was right on that pitch. Join us Friday, June 28th, for our next big and bright Friday night. The Astros take on the LA Angels of Anaheim. That's at 7 10 p.m. Stay after the game for a spectacular Michael Jackson themed fireworks show presented by Marathon Oil. Call 1 877 9 Astros or visit Astros.com to get your tickets today. That's the seventh three hit game for Altuve this season. His first in just over a month, and it's only the sixth inning. He's aboard for Jason Castro. He has a walk and a strikeout. J.D. Martinez on deck. Not Mike? sure what uh, Vince Scully's tweeting about tonight, but the Dodgers lost the first game of that twin bill. The Yankees beat them 6-4, Ash. I was just going to say Michael Jackson themed fireworks show. It must be a thriller, huh? It must be a thriller. Roki Kuroda won his seventh to lead the Pinstripers past the Dodgers. Mariano Rivera got save number 25. Toss over to first. Altuve stole third base back in the first inning. His 14th steal. Sounds like it's about time for Mariano to shut it down, huh? Boy, 25 saves June 19th. Let's go ahead and retire after we get about 55 saves in a season. Good grief. You think his mind can be changed? He says no. He's firm on that. One and one. The Mariners and Angels have a late night meeting. Saunders and Wilson out west. If the Yankees find their way into the postseason again with all the injuries they've had, they they're going to have to find a way to keep Mariano Mariano Rivera around. He has been really the leader to this point. How would you like to succeed him as the Yankee oh, closer? Boy, that'd be a nightmare. To be back to first. The surprising Padres lost to the Giants today in San Francisco 4 to 2. On a two run triple by Gregor Blanco. Ross Bumgarner, or Madison Bumgarner won his seventh, beating Luke Gregerson. And uh, Romo got save number 18. Guzman hit another homer, number three. Did you see him on the highlights last night? I missed that. Toward the left field corner, that slicing foul and out of play. One and two. Jesus Guzman delivered a pinch homer to center field. 
And he was so excited that on the way up the first base line, Padres dugouts on the first base side, he kind of turned sideways. Made a face to those guys. Well, around the AL West, you see the A's are 5 and 5, but 25 and 11 since May 11th. No wins by a Texas Rangers starter this month. Longest streaks in 75. Seattle's picked up the pace. Josh Hamilton grounded into three double plays and struck out twice. Other than that, it was probably a good night for Josh. I hope he played sound defense. Ooh. It's not always a guarantee of that either. Castro strikes out. Number four. That's a rough night. Three double plays and two strikeouts. Yeah, you ground into a couple of double plays and strike out on a night. You've you've had a rough one. Ooh, but those numbers. The White Sox are trailing in Minnesota. It's four to one twins at the end of the fifth. Alejandro Diaz hit his ninth home run for the Pale Hose. J.D. Martinez bats here with one out. He crushed a line drive to shortstop with both runners moving on the pitch, and that turned out to be a six unassisted double play back in the third. He could sacrifice fly his first time up. The catcher Maldonado went out. That line drive in the third inning, thank goodness there was already an out because with the runners going, that was as many outs as you want to record on the bases. <laughs> Maximum being three, and it Looked like a triple play ball. They've limited that now, huh? <laughs> it could be four outs in an inning. No balls, two strikes. See many a player who thought there were going to be four in an inning. <laughs> Diamondbacks beat the Marlins three to one. Cody Ross hit his third home run of the year. That was a big one, a decisive one in the eighth inning. Trevor Cahill though was injured runner going here a throw from the knees by Maldonado and it's boxed by Ricky Weeks safe at second base Altuve gets in there. Not sure what happened with Ricky on the other end of the throw. I don't know if Ricky's thinking oh he, he can't get anything on this throw from the knees but that throw ate him up. Boy Maldonado really couldn't have put it in a better spot. Look at this and well, that's just getting beat up with a throw. Ooh. That should have been a caught stealing. This was ball one. And that strike three. Fifth strikeout for Loesch. Yeah, that almost looked like one of those cloudy vision type situations for Ricky Weeks. He almost looked as if he, he really didn't see the ball the way he caught that or tried to catch it. But Altuve. Picks up another steal. That's his second of the night, 15. You know what this is? This is one of those plays that when you're getting older as a player and you're seeing it from the good side, that was what the good part was and the reaction. But down at second base, when you're getting older and this play happens to you, that kind of makes everybody think, you know what? Maybe his time has come and gone. Yeah. It's like a PGA golfer getting the yips or something. Chris Carter is 0 for 2, two fly balls to center field. Now Altuve takes off for third, no throw. He is running wild tonight. Two steals of third, three steals overall. I think Jose Altuve is starting to think he can steal some bags in this league. 16 for the year, 20 tries. See ya, right there. Good jump. A little surprised that Maldonado, with that arm he just showed off, didn't fire on down to third. Yeah. Put one on the money, and you can make it close to third. But Jose's running well. That's one and one on Carter. Two balls and a strike. Bullpen action. John Axford warming up. Loesch's had 91 pitches. Carter has been victimized many times this year by the slider. He laid off that one and it's 3 1. Slider's been a better pitch for Loesch in the month of June. He was getting hurt by that pitch earlier this year. But that is the choice of many a right hander against Chris Carter this season. And 
And Carter takes the walk. His 30th walk of the season. Second walk by Loesch tonight. He gets visited by uh, Maldonado, and it's Pena coming up next. Maybe not surprisingly, Ricky Weeks has at least to this point stayed away from this visit at the mound. Maldonado probably not too pleased about the work of Weeks. Well, the inning could well have been over had he caught that throw from Maldonado. Ricky decides to come on and got plenty of guys maybe around to protect him. That was weird, wasn't it? It was. You, you know, you said uh, maybe one of those plays where something goes wrong with the vision, and maybe that's what happened. But again, when a player gets a little bit, a little older in the game, and you make this type of a play, it starts to look like, well, he doesn't have it anymore. Essentially trying to catch the ball with two hands, which yeah. would not be happening normally. With a tag required, it's a one handed play. Generally, that only happens when you lose confidence with that one hand. Yes. That's what it looked like. Now, the infield shifts around for Pena. Pena has struck out and bounced back to Loesch. And that's strike one. Well, of course, if that happens to a player in the American League, there are fielding issues. He could always DH. Well, that bat side of things for Ricky Weeks hasn't been a, a real plus for the club this year. No, it is not. Weeks is out in right field now. Justin Maxwell on deck. One one to Carlos Pena. And Cardinals are tied 1 1 after 5 in St. Louis. Rangers lead the Athletics 4 to 3. They're in the top of the sixth in Texas. Lance Berkman hit his sixth homer. Runner going, and there's a high one to right field. Coming in for Schaefer. Weeks is underneath. Now he gives way, and Schaefer makes the catch. No runs, one hit, two men left. After six, still one to nothing, Houston. Everett there on third base tonight, but was behind home plate last night and he was getting some fans for his action. Call him third strike here. <laughs> Their tweet, ATT tweet of the game through Amazing Grace. She writes, I like the home plate umpire. He's got a great call, third strike, hand motion, hashtag Astros. We want to remind everyone to tweet at us at CSN Houston or at me, and maybe you could be our ATT tweet of the game, guys.
Very good. Yeah, he was animated on that. He really sold those calls. Aramis Ramirez hits a pop up. And that's going foul and out of play for strike one. You know, I have to agree. I, I even last night was thinking, that's a that's a good looking motion he's got on strike three. Yes. Some guys do it with the, the vocal cords, some with the physicality. That was good. You know, there there is an umpire, and I read about this guy. Don't know who he is, but he he would get rid of a piece of chewing gum after every half inning. And the fans picked up on what he was doing this year. Major League gum? Yeah, and he was putting it on the uh, on the field. On the field? Yeah, so the fans gave him a hard time. <laughs> yep. Where do you put it on the field? Well, he just dropped it. Just discarded it. He was umpiring third base. So um <laughs> Yeah, some fans caught him red handed gave him a very hard time about it this year but that apparently is his uh, is his way of working games ground ball in the hole backhanded Cedeno firing from deep in the hole good play he gets Ramirez for out number one I would think there would be some third baseman that might attract some of that gum in their cleats yeah it could happen Jonathan Lucroy coming up next. He's 0 for 2. You know, I really like the, the work that Marwin Gonzalez has done defensively at shortstop this year. Nice play here by Ronnie Cedeno. Yeah, Marwin had a lot of excellent plays last night. 15,866, the paid attendance tonight. The Mark Appel era has begun. Strike to Luke Roy. Yeah, this last play by Ronnie Cedeno certainly would not be in that category of routine, and yet he made it nice and routine by planting that right foot, using the good strong arm. Got a guy that doesn't burn down the line. Aramis Ramirez fits in that category. Make the play routinely. One and one for Eric Bedard. He's thrown only 81 pitches, 55 for strikes. That's a very efficient evening. But it's only one to nothing. Who's watching who on this staff? Is <laughs> Jordan Lyle setting the tone? Is it Bud Norris? Is it Eric Bedard? Who is it? Good I mean, competition right now, isn't it? It really is. Foul tip. One and two. Jason Castro loved the quick adjustments Jordan Lyles made. During the game last night, Jordan in seven innings, allowing one run. And Jason said he really did not have his best stuff, but he figured it out mm. pretty quickly. It's really nice when you can say that when a guy didn't have his best stuff and he still goes out and, and shuts the opposition down. Swing there for Luke Cry, and he got a little piece of it staying alive. Pirates and Reds are in the tenth. They're tied 1 1 at Cincinnati. Jay Bruce hit his 14th. That was a ninth inning homer, bottom of the ninth for the Reds. He's been on a home run jag again. And when he gets on those weeks of hitting long balls, it can be pretty exciting for Reds fans. Those two teams just do not like each other at all. There have been a lot of hit batters when Pittsburgh and Cincinnati have played each other this year. Some nasty stuff, in fact. Guys getting hit near the back of the collarbone there. Fly ball at the right field line. Uh, McCutcheon's been drilled a few times. Aroldis Chapman's hit some people. Uh, Brandon Phillips has uh, taken the brunt of the Pirates' rage. He's had a few that he's taken in his ribs and elsewhere. And uh, where's it going to end? That's the real question. Those that, two teams are battling each other. That doesn't happen by accident. That many guys getting hit. That's when somebody on my club gets drilled, and we say we're not going to let you get away with it, and then it. Same thing is said on the other side. That's right. Still one ball and two strikes. Uh, Dusty Baker, in fact, has had to answer some questions throughout this season about a lot of hit batters from the Reds pitching staff. Wonder if he removed the toothpick in, in uh, responding. <laughs> when Dusty gets a little angry, that toothpick will come out. Yeah. Not until then. A looping fly ball into left center field will go in for a hit. JD Martinez over to pick it up. And Luke Roy has a one out single. 
Whether you're treating your employees, hosting clients, or bringing out your church or youth sports team, Astros baseball can create an experience your group is sure to remember. Call 1-877-9-ASTROS or visit astros.com to enjoy special pricing and great benefits by reserving your group or suite today. Betancourt's the batter. He's grounded out twice. Rays lead the Red Sox at Boston 6-2 there in the bottom of the eighth inning. And Desmond Jennings hit his ninth home run for Tampa Bay. And they've, those two clubs have had it out a few times. The Rays in Boston this year. Bouncer and Dominguez will start. A 5-4-3. No double play. The ball gets loose and it's up the right field line. Looked like a double play ball, but Betancourt winds up at second base. I don't think this turned out to be the cleanest transfer by Jose Altuve, and then somehow the ball gets away from Peña at first base. But yeah, it starts out looking like that possibility right then, just a little delay, and then the poor throw. And with it being in the dirt, looked like it got on by Peña, maybe hit the runner going by. Peña tried to scoop it out of the dirt. Altuve probably will be charged with an error, which would be his fifth of the year for that one bounce throw. Now Doug Brokale comes out. Now first base open. Maldonado, the batter, and he is one for two. Prince is on deck. Bedard is at 87 pitches for the night. One of those intriguing meetings at the mound. You can come out and you can say look you should be out of this inning already. But that might not be the the message that a guy needs now to make sure you go out and get that one more out before a run comes across. Very good ball game for Eric Bedard but the potential tying runs at second base with two outs and a one nothing game. Maldonado single to center in the third inning he struck out in the fifth. How about Bedard and the pitch counts tonight. You'd like to stay at 15 or less per inning over the course of a ball game. He's well under that figure. And he throws strike one. Blue Jays remain in flight. They beat the Rockies tonight, five to two. Jose Cisnero warming up. Well, that Toronto bunch is torrid. Eight straight wins for the Fighting Blue Jays. They're now one game under 500. They've come a long ways, baby. Yeah, Blue Jays are in flight. That is the call for their first run on any given ball game. They got three in the first. So that call went out early tonight. No balls, two strikes, and beneficiary Mark Burley squared his record at four and four, beating Juan Nicasio of the Rockies. Casey Jansen got his 16th save, and Cargo hit his 21st for Colorado. But he might be kind of the Lone Ranger in that batting lineup now. Well, oh, that's a heck of a year being had with Tulo out of there. It really is. Swing and a miss at a curve, and what a job by Bedard. No runs, one hit, one error, one left, middle of the seventh inning, and Bedard maintains a one to nothing lead.
game. Let's take a look at our game sum summary presented by Mazda. Not a whole lot offensively going on back in the first inning. The Astros struck. J.D. Martinez with a sack fly came with one out, playing Jose Altuve, who had singled and stolen third base. But then it's been Eric Bedard just shutting it down all night long. Seven shutout innings. He has struck out a eight. Eric Bedard has been just brilliant tonight. One nothing Astros as the fans take their seventh inning stretch and they're watching reliever John Axford the former closer of the Brewers warm up. He's fallen out of that closer role with that two and three record and a four point six six ERA no saves in three opportunities. Kind of surprising to see those numbers with more hits allowed than innings pitched. Axford, a guy who at one time was the real shutdown closer. Well, he had a blown save early, April 1st against Colorado. Another one May 1st, another one May 14th. 27 saves shy of tying Dan Plesek for the all-time Brewers franchise lead, but Jim Henderson has taken over as the closer. And now in this one nothing game he comes on after Kyle Lotion six innings allowed six hits one run walking two and fanning five Justin Maxwell the batter 0 for 2. Axford misses and falls behind one and oh. Braves lead the Mets five to three there in the top of the ninth inning now Chris Johnson hit his fourth homer. One ball, one strike. Mets took it to the Braves in that doubleheader with the outstanding young pitchers. Nationals two, Phillies two, bottom of the tenth in Philadelphia. Michael Young hit his third home run. Big breaking ball goes for a ball to J Max, and it's two and one to Justin. Cleveland took the measure of Kansas City. In Cleveland, six to three. Justin Masterson winning his ninth with a couple of home runs from Bradley to give him four. Strike to Maxwell. That makes it two and two. But Michael Young might have a bigger home run year this year, getting a chance to play a bunch of games in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. He's very definitely on the downside of his career. A couple of starting pitchers that have been having a good time and the smiles are abundant. Well, Justin Maxwell made that remark to Julia in the pregame interview that he senses a more confident Astros team now than the one he left in April. Well, you hear about focus on a ball club and you do have to focus but I think you have to have a lot of fun too. I think when you're having fun you're, you're playing well. Dominguez is on deck. Sedano do up third in the inning. Way upstairs. Three and two. Dodgers beat the Yankees six to nothing in the ninth cap of that doubleheader. Chris Capuano with a shutout win with a home run from Yasiel Puig, his fifth. It's pretty good. That was a three hitter by the Dodgers. Beating Phil Hughes, who's three and six. Puig, somebody to watch. In the air behind the dish and out of play. Tomorrow it's Giovanni Gallardo on the mound for Milwaukee. He has won his last two starts and has not allowed a run in those 14 innings. He's 13 and 3 with a 2.87 career ERA against the Astros in 16 starts. Now back again. Lucas Harrell, four and seven for the Astros, will be his mound opponent tomorrow at 110. Lucas will be trying to beat Bruce for the first time. He is 0 and 1 in his career against them.
That's a strikeout. Number six for the Brewers tonight. Let's go to Julia. Thank you, Browning. MLB.tv celebrates 11 years with new low yearly prices. Watch every out-of-market game live on over 350 supported mobile and connected devices in HD quality with MLB.tv Premium. Visit MLB.tv Baseball everywhere. Back to you. Very succinct, Julia. Thank you. <laughs> Matt Dominguez is one for two. You can take more time in Chicago, though. We'll give you 20 minutes before the first pitch. <laughs> I can't wait. Yeah, it's it's fun. I was supposed to be looking up the weather for you earlier. I That's know there's okay. a chance of rain. We know it's going to be warm with a chance of rain every day. Chance of day games, I think, three times. Yeah. Wind blowing in off the lake. Ooh, you think this time of year? Well, I'm just kidding. Actually. <laughs> one and one. But when that wind's blowing in, that is one pitcher's ballpark. But when it's blowing out, it's hard to hit a fly ball that stays in the yard. We forgot to tell Julia. When you get up, look outside your hotel room window and see which way the wind is blowing. And you'll know what kind of a game you're in for. Bounce to shortstop. Segura. Two outs. You know the pitchers all do that. Oh, when they get to the ballpark. They usually know already, but if they look up and see the wind blowing out at Wrigley Field, it is shake and tremble time. This is something I actually already knew, guys, thanks to Mr. Craig Biggio, was telling me this oh. piece of information. Said okay. Wrigley's one of his favorites. Well, yeah, I, I can see why with his performance there. Just like Lance Berkman, huh? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> not so much. <laughs> But uh, did he tell you about the clubhouse there? Julia? He did. He did. That he said that's absolutely something I need to do when I'm there. Yeah. Well, you could do it once, but don't wear those high heels of yours when you do it. Why not? Up those stairs. A lot of stairs. I'm up for a challenge now. Okay. So Daniel takes ball one. Yeah, we'll have to show you the ropes when we get there. But that walkway that goes from the the clubhouse that's kind of upstairs on down to the dugout, the walkway. Winds right through where the, the paying customers are buying their hot dogs and getting ready to yell at opposing players. And it used to just be a screened in look at the players and, and get on them all they wanted kind of a walkway. Line shot headed for the right field corner by Cedeno. Sliding play by Schaefer. What an effort by Logan Schaefer to hold him to a single. That is spectacular work by Schaefer. That really is a heck of a play. Right on the heels of me talking about how difficult it was to be at Wrigley in years gone by. Watch this shot. It's hard to cover that line that quickly and then come up firing. Sure is. That was a perfectly yeah. timed slide, too. Beautifully done. And that slide coming right out of the, the frame there. Like he knew exactly what it was going to look like. Do not practice that in your backyard, kids. Certainly not in the house. Brandon Barnes with strike one. He's one for three. Yeah, that used to be quite a challenge going from that clubhouse to the dugout or vice versa, whatever the case may be. It certainly cut down on clubhouse visits by the players during the ball game back in the day, but they have put tarps up, at least in years that I've seen since. And Julia, another reason not to wear your high heel shoes, the uh, the dugouts are very low there. And they're made for about a roster of maybe 12. Yeah. <laughs> very, very cramped. 25 man roster out of the question. Not a good place to be during September call up time. Ooh, that's true. And the dugouts flood when it rains. Any other reason you can provide to want to go to Chicago's Wrigley Field? Um, well, the hot dogs are good. I have to check you out on that one. You know, it's going to be old-fashioned Wrigley Field. No lights. It's three day games. Three day games. Well, the lights will be there, but they won't be on. Two balls, two strikes. I'm going to take my wife and enjoy a, a couple of evenings, I think. 
The Astros had a game there in 95 that had to be seen to believe. Uh, to be believed. They were in the uh, race for a playoff spot with the Rockies. They wound up losing out to the Rockies on the final day of the season. Barnes strikes out. That ends the seventh inning with no runs a hit and a man left, and we move to the eighth, one to nothing Astros. you to tune in to Chevy Hometown Kids every Saturday morning at 9.30 on CSN. Chevy Hometown Kids where it's not about the score, but the experience. Pretty nice experiences being had this evening. Eric Bedard leads it one to nothing. We go to the eighth inning. Josh Prince is the first man up. He's bounced into a double play and hit a fly ball to right field. Hector Ambrose is working in the bullpen for Houston. That's strike one on a curveball from Bedard, and in the Milwaukee bullpen, their closer Jim Henderson is up. Last 22 games, Astros starters have won 10. They've lost six with a 2.54 ERA. That's the lowest ERA for any starting staff in the majors since May 27. No balls, two strikes. The series against the White Sox, very well pitched. Astros behind Bedard on the first game two to one beating sale and they won four to three behind Lucas Harrell and they won five to four behind Dallas Keuchel in the dirt and it's one and two to Prince Prince is from Lake Charles Louisiana he lives in Sulphur Louisiana third round pick in 09 by the Brewers. Last year he was at Double A Huntsville, where he hit seven homers and drove in 55 runs. He did not have a good numbers when he joined the Brewers today from their Triple A club, Nashville. But Aoki will be away for a few days, so he's the replacement. Two balls, two strikes, and with a left-hander on the mound. I always talk about change-ups and arm speed. That last pitch by Bedard. Appeared to be the changeup, and he really slowed his arm speed down on this one. That's uh, something that'll take the effectiveness of that pitch away. He's thrown 94 pitches. Last seven starts before this one, Bedard's ERA was 3.40. Has very good numbers here at Minute Maid Park, including a 2.36 ERA this year. But now a full count on Prince. And it may be a batter by batter situation here regarding Bedard nearing 100 pitches for Bo Porter. Ambry's warming up. Lefty hitting Schaefer on deck. Prince takes and it's ball four, leadoff walk. Second of the night for Bedard.
Prince is a good base runner. He had 41 stolen bases at Double A Huntsville last year. At 147 in four minor league seasons. Uncharted territory this year for Eric Bedard working into the eighth inning. After Ambrose is getting ready for support if needed. Logan Schaefer, who made that excellent defensive play to limit Sedeno's hit to a single, has struck out both times tonight. And the Astros uh, are looking like they expect a bunt here with Dominguez in on the grass at third. Lefty on lefty matchup. That could be the play for Renneke. Dominguez creeps in a little bit more and the throw goes to first. You know, something should have been learned right there, and the Astros already anticipating bunt, but clearly Schaefer was getting set to put that bat in bunting position. And that really seems to be the only option anyway with that last at bat in the sixth inning. The strikeout of Schaefer looked like he was completely overmatched. He's around, but takes it for a ball. A big sweeping breaking ball. Just kind of anticipate that it has to catch the plate somewhere there. And you now leaves first, and the bunt is put down. Bedard. Will look at second and then throw to Altuve at first in time for the sacrifice from one to four on Schaefer. But for a fortunately timed step by Altuve, that could have been a mess. Could have. And Bedard looked at second and might have had a play in that direction. He might have, but by the time he took that look and he went back to first, he had no room for any mistakes. Ball fairly sharply bunted. Now Bull Porter's coming out with the right handed hitting weeks and then Segura to follow. That's going to be it for Eric Bedard. Wonderful night for Eric Bedard. Seven and a third innings. And he leaves with a one nothing lead and the runner at second is his. He cannot lose it. But if he wins it's going to be number three of the year and he will will have really earned it. We'll be right back with a score one nothing Houston. on top the Astros take on the Brewers tomorrow at 110 be sure to get to Minute Maid Park early 10,000 fans will receive a drawstring bag courtesy of MLB Network call 1-877-9 Astros to get your tickets now guys we were talking Chicago weather because the Astros is going to play the Cubs here in a couple of days and it is uh, highs mid to high 80s lows around 71 30 percent chance of rain all three days of course those are day games there in Chicago Hopefully it doesn't rain on my Chicago parade, guys. Oh, no, we can't have that. Thanks, Julia, for the update. Hector Ambrose will come in with a runner at second, one out here in the eighth inning, leading 1 0 with a 1 and 3 record and a 4.76 ERA. Left hand hitters 
torn him up pretty well. 409. Overall 310. Love to keep him against the righties. And that is the plan with Weeks the batter and then Segura on deck. Gomez Ramirez all bat right. Luke Croy bat court. Got a right handed hitting lineup in there. Weeks single to right center in the sixth inning. He's one for three. Goes with a breaking pitch and it's strike one to Weeks. Embry's worked two thirds of an inning Sunday against the White Sox, and uh, he got. Three run lead when he came in, five to two. He has stranded 15 of the 19 runners he's inherited. Bouncer goes foul. No balls, two strikes, and he's been effective on this homestand in both appearances in that White Sox series. Got two holds. Twelve of Ambrose's last thirteen outings, he's not given up an earned run or a walk. Seven hits for Houston, four for Milwaukee. All the hits in the game have been singles. Foul ball. Oh, that's so close. Yes, it was to a strikeout on a foul tip. Pretty much a hanging breaking ball, but you get that foul tip, and you just hope you can hang on. There is nothing you can do as a catcher to say I'm going to get better at this. Ball either stays in the glove or it doesn't. And it dropped right out. I've heard people talk about you need to work on being able to hang on to. What are you <laughs> talking about? That's the minutest of split seconds that goes on there. Yeah. One and two. And the ball's going to change direction off the bat. So how do you work on that? You've got to anticipate. Okay. It's a guessing game that only the finest win at. Okay. Now Castro goes out to talk with Ambrose. How would you like to see me guess on this one, big guy? <laughs> Yeah, you get the game this deep, one nothing. You get that foul tip. Oh, how you'd love to hang on to that one. Brewers have been shut out three times this season. Last year they led the National League in runs scored with 776. They bombed away with 202 homers. That also led the NL. In the air and left fielder Martinez looking up and Ricky Weeks has given Milwaukee a 2 to 1 lead. Home run number 6 for Weeks giving him 15 runs batted in. And the Brewers are up by 1. After that visit at the mound. 1 2 pitch. Was turned around by Weeks. Well, there's one of those pitching moves that doesn't pay off. Ricky Weeks takes advantage of one more swing as that foul tip comes out of the glove, gets another breaking ball, and I called the other one a hanger. This one was the very same. Gene Segura is the batter. He's one for three. Strike one for Ambrose. Eric Bedard in seven and a third innings. Allows four hits, one run. Walking two, fanning eight. And gets a no decision. Ambrose fields it. Goes to Pena. Two down. Oh, that's a tough one for Bedard. Yeah, he winds up with an earned run on his slate. And he won't say a word about it, but it'll hurt.
Carlos Gomez is 0 for 2 with a walk. Astros have Altuve, Castro, and Martinez do up in the bottom of the eighth. That's ball one. Kyle Loesch now off the hook after six innings of six hit one run baseball, walking two, fanning five. Bunted. Embry's over, bare handing and throwing in time. Very close play on Gomez to end the top of the eight. Two run score on one hit. Ricky Weeks makes it two to one Brewers in the eight. The Astros finish off their seven game homestand with an afternoon affair tomorrow against these Milwaukee Brewers. Astros pregame live starts tomorrow at 12 30 p.m. only on Comcast Sports Now. Let's take a look at tomorrow's pitching matchup brought to you by Chevron. Care for your car. It'll be Giovanni Gallardo, ace of the staff for the Brewers, 6 and 6 on the year, 441 the Ernie. Against Lucas Harrell, 5 and 7, 448. One and two on the month with a 174 ERA. Lucas Harold trying to tighten up his game. Now Ron Renneke is going with his closer here, Jim Henderson, for the bottom of the eighth with the one run lead. He's two and two with a 1.59 ERA. He's nine for 10 in saves, and he's given up 15 hits in 22 and two thirds innings. He's been beating everybody up. Overall 183 the batting average against right hand hitters just 149. Tough assignment now. Jose Altuve is three for three. The Astros are warming up their closer Jose Veras. Castro and Martinez to follow. And the Astros eighth. Third baseman Ramirez even with the bag. And that one is nowhere close. As Bob Euchre would say well you know. Just I, I ran into Bob last night and yeah. mentioned the uh, the fact that we had seen him on our telecast last night and uh, mentioned that it was on the the wild pitch that went well over the head of the hitter and he immediately said just about out just a bit outside huh that's a beautiful line what a great guy foul back one ball one strike as Altuve looks to get on base for his fourth time. Anderson spent some time on the disabled list with the right hamstring strain. Anderson's 30 years old. He's from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Last year he had three saves for the Brewers. It's one and two. Jose looked like he felt like he got that hanging breaking ball that maybe he could jack to left and get this game tied quickly. Well, 
Well, the Brewers have Francisco Rodriguez out there. Close to 300 career saves. It's two balls, two strikes. So in this game, Henderson might be the setup man for K Rod. K Rod's four for four in saves this year for the Brewers. As a team, they have 14 saves and 23 opportunities. Fouled away. Still two and two as the Astros bat here in the eighth, trailing by one. If you're leading one nothing, a two-run homer by Weeks has certainly changed the complexion of this game. After the Astros had hit so well with Bedard going seven and a third. Two big rounds. Ramirez backs up, throws from deep, and gets him. One out. It was well done. And that second hop that pushes the third baseman back, especially with a speedy guy going down the line, makes it really tough. But yet, watch how he plants the right foot immediately, right there, and then the strong throw on the money. You got to do it right if you're going to make that play, and he's made it before. A few times, Altuve retired for the first time. Now it's Castro, Jason with two strikeouts and a walk tonight. That cuts inside on him, and it's ball one. Jason hitting 10 homers and Carlos Corper in two. 12 home runs give the Astros catching core a good total, ranking very high among Major League clubs. Blue Jays number one with 15. The shot into left field. He just takes it right by Ramos Ramirez with the infield shifted around, playing him to pull. And he hit it hard to take his hitting streak to six games. Yeah, go ahead and put that shift on me. Now I'm a little surprised at the shift because Jason is so adept at going that direction. Now, yes, normally it's in the air to left field, but stays on top of this one very well. Astros aboard. Eight hits for the Astros, all of them singles. And it's J.D. Martinez. He drove in the run with a sack fly in the first inning. Then he lined into a double play in the third and struck out looking in the sixth. He moves back and it's ball one. Chris Carter's on deck. Martinez takes a look at it. It's ball two. The Astros' record when they trail after seven innings is two and 35. They had the lead one to nothing after seven. They lost it in the top of the eighth. Now trying to get something going here in the bottom of the eighth. Ball three to J.D. Martinez. Anderson was drafted by Montreal in 03, and then he joined Milwaukee as a free agent in 09. Last year he had big strikeout numbers, 45 in 30 innings at the major league level, had 15 saves in Triple A Nashville. So he was a pretty big surprise at the major league level last year. Three and one. Anderson worked a scoreless ninth inning Saturday at Cincinnati, and in 20 of his 23 appearances, he has pitched scoreless baseball. First time he's been on an opening day roster in his career. 
Foul back. Now it's a full count. We see these arms. Another club that has those 95 plus type heaters coming out of the back end of the bullpen. Henderson at 97 with that last fastball. It's really become a must in the game today. Yes. Three two count with Castro taking his lead. Betancourt playing a step off the bag. And a strikeout for out number two. Well, he had quite a comeback falling behind 3 0. Leaves the slider up a bit but finds the outside edge. 11. Lefty Mike Gonzalez is warming up now for Milwaukee. Chris Carter has two fly balls to center field and a walk. Gonzalez might be warming up for Pena, who's on deck. Outside for ball one to Carter. He's lost a lot of major league appearances in his career, local product. He's up to see Carlos Pena in the event that it gets that far. Mm -hmm. Inside that time, and it's ball two to Carter. Two former Brewers pitchers are currently closers for other teams. Jose Veras for the Astros, a former Brewer, and Grant Balfour. 17 saves for Oakland. Rick Kranitz is the pitching coach talking there to Ron Renneke. Strag makes it 2 1. Usually hitters are looking for a little bit better pitch to swing at on 2 0 than that one was. Yeah, if you commit to that pitch, you're making a big mistake as a hitter. Just go ahead and let it be called a strike and see if you can get something that you can handle. Runner going. Here's the throw, and Weeks with the tag on Castro, and they got him. So Castro took off, and that's out number three. No runs a hit, nobody left. We move to the ninth inning, and there's the strong arm of Maldonado keeping the Brewers in the lead, two to one. Is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. We have had some low scoring, well pitched ball games here in this homestand in downtown Houston at Minute Maid Park. Here's another one. Two to one, Milwaukee leading. Top of the ninth inning arriving. Ramirez, Luke Roy, and Betancourt do up. Ron Renneke's Brewers who were blasted by the Astros last night. Ten to one. Milwaukee trailed one to nothing until with one out in the eighth inning, Ricky Weeks. Belted a two run homer off Hector Ambrose. 
Well, Porter had gotten seven and a third innings from Eric Bedard, lifted him with a runner at second after the sacrifice bunt by Schaefer. And then Weeks hit the two run homer, giving Milwaukee the lead. Bo will have Carter Pena and Maxwell do up in the bottom of the ninth after Castro was caught stealing to end the bottom of the eighth. Now Josh Fields warming up for Houston along with Wesley Wright as Ramirez leads it off. He's 0 for 3. Strikeout and two ground outs for Aramis. There's ball one from Ambrose who surrendered the homer to Weeks, and that was the 41st home run allowed by the Astros bullpen this season, and that is high in the American League. Another drive to left field and another Milwaukee homer. Ramirez with number four makes it three to one, Brewers. He has been an Astros nemesis down through the years. 43 career homers for Ramirez against Houston pitching. Well, a game like this all the tougher when you've got that great starting pitching on the night. Eric Bedard certainly pitched well enough to win. 18 runs batted in for Ramirez. See him just sit on that breaking ball. Saw it well and not getting fooled a bit. Into the Landry's Crawford boxes now Jonathan Lucroy. Roy takes that pitch and it's ball one. He singled in the seventh inning. Strike evens the count at one and one. The Brewers now have hit 67 home runs. They're in the middle of the pack in the National League. Mostly right, Josh Fields, as we mentioned, are warming up. Two balls and a strike. Fouled away. Two balls, two strikes now to Jonathan Lucroy. Francisco Rodriguez warming up. They're in the 12th in Cincinnati. Pirates and Reds still tied 1 1. Sam LeCure at the game now for the Reds. No one hit him. Luke Croy to first base, hit by the pitch from Ambrose. First hit batsman by Ambrose this year. Doug broke Kale to the phone. And now Bo Porter's out to the mound with Betancourt two up next. He'll make the move to the bullpen here. He's had Fields warming up from the right side, and he'll call in Josh. Ramirez homered. Now Luke Croy hit by a pitch. That hastens the end of the evening for Hector Ambrose. And we'll be right back with a score Milwaukee 3, Houston 1.
with the Astros with the Quad Cities River Bandits and their all stars, Carlos Correa. 304, four homers, 44 runs batted in. He's had a big month driving in runs. Lance McCullers has a 2.08 ERA. Jordan Janowski, 2 0 with a 3.30 ERA. And uh, in the All Star game last night, the East beat the West 6 5. McCullers got the start, went one scoreless inning with two strikeouts. Correa started and he went two for three. There's a lot of guys that have been bright spots on the minor league scene this year for Houston. Obviously, they have had winning ball clubs on the minor league level, but great to see Carlos Correa coming along so nicely with the bat. I haven't heard a lot about his defense. So I we'll have to ask around. Hopefully, he is becoming the guy that will be counted on in the future. Josh Fields gets a foul ball from Betancourt. Betancourt is 0 for 3. Fields, the Rule 5 pick for the Astros, has spent time on the disabled list with a forearm strain for Houston. And just kind of getting back in the mix now. He's had a few appearances since returning from that injury and had some minor league rehab time as well. He's had four appearances since he returned. Most recent one uh, two days ago in the White Sox series, two scoreless innings for Josh. Curve works for a strike for him, and it's 0 and 2 for Josh Fields. Oklahoma City won last night over New Orleans 3 to 1. Brad Peacock went six and a third shutout innings. And since he returned to the Red Hawks June 12th, he's allowed one run over 12 and a third. Jonathan Singleton one for four. Jake Elmore had a couple of hits. Chase Juan Lynn had a couple of hits as well. Pitch is up. And a check swing call. Goes Milwaukee's way. It's one and two. Dan Bellino with a call. Asher Wojciechowski is uh, getting some rave reviews for his work at Oklahoma City. Last 10 games, 3 and 2 with a 302 ERA. Now that's got to be for the season. 44 strikeouts for him in 50 and two thirds innings. Strikeout looking, but court retired one out. Hunter Pence, as you know, was traded by the Astros. It was a part of the rebuilding situation to the Phillies in 2011. Jonathan Singleton, Jared Cosart, Domingo Santana, and Josh Zide all came in that deal, and that's what they're doing. I wonder how the Phillies feel about that deal right about now. It's um, got a chance to work out very nicely for Houston. Hunter Pence having another nice season this year in a Giants uniform. Yes, he is. Yeah, all those guys have done well in the minors. Maldonado is one for three. Pena over for this foul pop. Or over a little bit more for the catch and takes that one away from the fan. For out number two. Well, that's fair game as he reaches into the stands, but it's nice when the home fans allow the home player to make a catch. Not a whole lot of foul territory here. But Carlos able to easily win out on that opportunity. And yeah, when it's all said and done, whether by pure panic or just being kind there, the fans get out of the way. There's some panic going on sometimes on those. I'd have had it. Josh Prince is 0 for 2 with a walk and a run scored. Strike for Josh Fields, the former closer at the University of Georgia. If he could find that strike zone on a steady basis, good locations, his arm could fit nicely. But his command issues through the minor leagues were probably the, the one thing that really held him back. Strike and it's 0 and 2. The Astros scouted him uh, this winter and they liked what they saw as far as those command Situations with Josh Fields, so they took him in the Rule 5 draft in early December. He uh, played at the end of the season for Paul Tuckett after pitching most of the year at Double A Portland in the Red Sox organization and got a save in the International League Finals clinching game. Bounces that one there, and it's one and two for Fields. 
Brandon Kinsler is getting loose for Milwaukee. George Springer had a nice game for Corpus Christi last night. The Hooks lost eight to four to San Antonio, but Springer went three for four with a double and stole two bases. That should give him about 20 steals for the year. We'll check on his statistical line for the Hooks. He was at 18 homers and 18 steals a few days ago. Strike three. And Fields gets three in a row. Ramirez homers and Milwaukee leads it three to one as Carlos Pena comes up to bat second in the bottom of the ninth. Ninth inning. Stay tuned for post game live presented by MD Anderson making cancer history. Well, K Rod is the closer tonight. Francisco Rodriguez. He's four for four for the Brewers this season. And he had been a closer throughout his career until he came from the Mets to Milwaukee. A 1 0 record this year, a 0 0.73 ERA. He's done some closing for the Brewers, but has slipped back into that setup role more often than not since joining Milwaukee. Five consecutive scoreless outings for the hard throwing right hander. For the opposition hitters enjoying a 128 feast against him. Wow. That is impressive stuff. He's making a resurgence. He worked uh, hitless or scoreless eighth inning last night. He gave up a hit. Has 298 career saves. That's 25th on the all time list. Jason Isringhausen has 300. So does Bruce Souter. And K Rod was at Nashville. He came up on the 16th of May. Brewers signed him to a minor league deal on April 17th. Chris Carter leads it off. He's 0 for 2 with a walk. Strike one to Carter. He was at the plate when Jason Castro was thrown out, trying to steal for the final out in the eighth inning. Last year, K Rod had three saves for the Brewers in 78 relief appearances, and he was a free agent. One shot goes foul. No balls, two strikes. Francisco Rodriguez. Where he came up and a real phenom for the Angels. Pitched in that 02 World Series and he was lighting it up for years. Fell upon hard times with the New York Mets. He gets a strikeout here. One out. Jim Henderson in one inning, allowed one hit, no runs, had no walks, and had a strikeout. Axford, one inning of one hit shutout ball with no walks and two strikeouts. Now it's Carlos Pena. Pena's 0 for 3. Justin Maxwell's on deck. 
checked on the stats of George Springer at Double A Corpus Christi. George is hitting 303, 18 homers, 52 runs batted in, 21 steals and 26 attempts. He has 20 doubles now. Very good all around year for George Springer. There's ball one. Coming into tonight, he had struck out 89 times and 254 at bat. So that would be the area Astros hope would improve for George Springer. What kind of excitement might he bring along with him if he showed up on the scene? He might bring quite a bit. He's a very athletic guy. You saw him in spring yep. training. What did you think? I loved him. That first 10 to 14 days of the spring, I thought he was the most impressive player in camp. He started to struggle a little bit at that point, but everybody is going to. I don't care if you're young or veteran. Uh, everybody, when a guy that's young starts to struggle, will say, well, he, you know, he's just uh, a youngster, and that's the reason for the struggles. The reason for the struggle is it's a tough game. Line shot right field. Man, that was cracked off the bat of Pena. He'll only get a single on it because of the way Milwaukee played him, but that was a rocket. After that three run homer he hit last night, and then that swing of the bat, Carlos has been on some balls lately. I bet you Carlos would tell you he hit this ball every bit as hard as the home run last night. Yep. It's this swing. That's everything in it. He's a back foot, ball back kind of a hitter. But when he gets it on the sweet spot of the bat, he can drive it with anybody. That's nine hits for the Astros, all of them singles. Now Maxwell, the batter. In the dirt ball one. J Max 0 for 3 tonight. And Matt Dominguez is on deck. This could get pretty interesting if Matt comes to the plate with a couple of men on or a couple of runs in. Betancourt playing a step off the bag on Pena. Off the plate, ball two. Tampa Bay beat the Red Sox in Boston, six to two. Jimmy Hellickson won his fifth, beating Ryan Dempster. He lost his eighth. Jose Veras warming up for Houston again. Back. It's where you tell a guy like Paris, the closer, just get it loose. Don't get all the way there. Just get it loose, and then you take your read of the ball game. If it looks like the opportunity might arise, then light it up. Short Segura falls, throws to first low and safe there. He lost his balance and now two men on and one out for Matt Dominguez. Well, the skates just simply went out for Segura and a big break for the Astros. It wasn't likely going to be a double play, but certainly should have gotten the lead out at second. Hit number 10 for the Astros. Maxwell's one for four now. We go to Julia Morales. Thanks, Brownie. Hitting coach John Maley was just talking about Matt Dominguez today with runners in scoring position. He said he's really impressed with what, when, how he handles those situations. He's actually batting 310 with runners in scoring position and with bases loaded. He's slugging 1,000 after that first career grand slam last night. Uh, two men aboard, and he's one for three tonight. One out. And he takes ball one. Ani Cedeno's on deck. There are other choices for Bull Porter. He should want to pitch hit for Cedeno. Cedeno's two for three tonight. He might want a left-handed bat against K. Rod. In for a strike, and it's one and one to Dominguez.
Pick off at second. Oh, that was close. Oh, oh. Pena barely got back in on the throw to Ricky Weeks. Thought the Astros caught a break. Back in the eighth inning, Carlos Gomez tried to drop down a bunt for a base hit. He was called out at first base. This was very close and a good call when it's all said and done. Looks like Maxwell or Pena rather just does get that hand back in. Really close. Quick tag by Weeks. Foul back and it's one and two. You know, <laughs> Weeks has made that when he almost got. Pena diving back in, then they made the quick tag on Castro trying to steal in the eighth inning after muffing that throw to second on Altuve's steal in the sixth. So it would have been kind of a weird yeah. situation there for Ricky Weeks. It has at that end on that stolen base attempt by Castro. I thought it was an exceptional tag by Ricky Weeks as he just snapped the glove right down, didn't reach at all. When you reach, player starts gaining that that momentum. At the bag gets the foot in early or the hand as it as the case may be but with that tag going straight down that's when you get the chance to get a guy. Breaking pitch Dominguez tried to check and he did on the field to Bellino. That, that was close as well. Yeah it was. Let's see how close. A great job by Matt. Good strong hands and wrists. Fielders all very deep with a two run lead and two men on, and now the catcher Maldonado goes out. Pirates and Reds are still 1 1. They're in the top of the 13th now. Rangers lead the Athletics 9 to 4. They're moving to the ninth soon. Ball, it stayed up. Some guys appear to be ready for that big moment to try to help a team win a game. Look at this swing. Yeah, he got out early and pulled it foul, but he was ready when he saw a breaking ball left up to see if he could jump on one, become the big man of the night. Dominguez pops it up. Court in and field fly. Two outs. Matt got a change up right there. 81 miles an hour. Pretty fortunate on that pitch with that that location combined with it to even make contact. That's a good job by K Rod. Violent delivery. And when you give arm speed on that change up, and you can see there was a little bit of a slowdown, a little tentative on the release. But boy, that makes life tough on a hitter. Changeup's been a staple for him down through the years. All that body action. He got out number two on it. Now it's Ronnie Cedeno. Cedeno's two for three. I was impressed with that at bat by Matt Dominguez. He looked like a guy who was ready for the big moment. Brandon Barnes on deck. Gomez just moved over to right center, and there's strike one on a foul tip. Ball one strike. And oh, Polino brings it up as a strike. Make it 0 and 2. Yeah, I'd say that bat dragged on through there. Maldonado pays another visit to the mound.
Well, you just see this more and more with catchers going out to talk with pitchers. Especially with a runner at second, it happens a lot. Foul ball. That was intriguing. Like Maldonado, the catcher, threw the glove up as a target, like you would see on a desired fastball up for the strikeout. But K Rod comes with the change or splitter down. And the only thing I can guess is that Maldonado's looking for somebody maybe to holler out, holler the wrong thing. Yep. Could be. And a strikeout ends it. So Milwaukee with the eighth inning two run homer by Weeks. And then the Ramirez ninth inning solo shot. Come back to win it. Final score Milwaukee three and Houston one. The series is tied at one. Rubber game coming tomorrow. We'll be right back.